Okay, welcome guys, welcome. And I'll just double check that we are actually live. It's funny, my alt tabs are really slow at the moment. There we go. Just double check. And yeah, we are live, great. Okay, welcome, welcome. We are playing some Distant Worlds 2 today with the new game faction update, which has come out. So I've only just woken up again. I've actually slept in a bit today. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I'm going to be a little bit groggy at the start. But the Game Faction update now has sort of caught up with the open beta. And so the open beta is now sort of uh, basically is, is currently not actually active because it is the it is the launch version, which is version 1.2.2.0, uh, which is sort of like now the official release of the Game Factions, uh, the new updates to the Game Factions, as well as some other updates to a lot of the um, user experience, user interface aspects of the game. So we're starting to get the nice to have type things that are coming. So uh, anyway, during the course of this, uh, you know, while I'm live streaming, I'm, I'm guessing there won't be too many people watching right now because I didn't schedule the stream. But um, if you are wanting to ask any questions, please ask away and I will do my best to um, explain what's going on. Anyway, let's just go and uh, continue the game that I was playing yesterday. I set one up and I only played for maybe a couple of months of game time, like it was hardly any time at all. Hi, uh, Gojira Green, how are you going? And hi, anybody else that has joined us? So let's just go through while everything is paused as to um, you know what's going on and how things are working. I want to I want to do this on mainly as a gameplay type video more so than a um, explanation video. In the last one, I went through in a lot of detail as to how to set set the game up. I might still just summarise that very very quickly. The big changes in the game at this stage are things like the um, the border treatments have now been sort of tweaked a little bit. We're not going to see much with that until we find a lot of other factions. Uh, I can open up. I did actually show... No, I'll keep it going. But um, the borders are now really, really nice. Like, like it's um, perfect. It's perfect. I've been wanting this for so long. And um, you can see there, it just... We now have very, very defined uh, space between the between the different empires. So, well done for, uh, you know, to... Um, uh, to Matrix slash Slytherin and um, and what's the actually I forget, I forget the game is it Game Force I forget the actual name of the development company anyway it's like this is great this is awesome also then we have the um, as I say I've just woken up so I'm going to, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit sort of groggy at, at the start here the other thing that they've actually done is that they've done they've spent a lot of time uh, with their uh, fleet engagements, so fleet, fleet engagement areas and attack paths, etc. Uh, in this case, they've actually coloured defence fleets, attack fleets, invasion fleets, and, and raiding fleets. Now, there's hardly any time for the fleets to have actually kicked in, and I've set them to very, very small areas. But if we go and um, I can turn this one on, you can see that this one's for selected fleets. If I turn all the fleets on. Probably nothing much will show up because I don't actually have anything. But if I go into, and just very, very roughly, I've got about four fleets I'm building at the moment. This fleet here is actually, is pretty good, but it's not set to manual. If I just look at the tactics, so this is going to go to 50% of their fuel range, whatever their fuel range happens to be, which that is the fuel range there, actually. So we should see a color border in around about here. If I turn them, if I, if I stop them from being a... Um, uh, what is it? A um, a manually controlled fleet. So if I go across and make that into a defence fleet, we then end up with half the half the um, the fuel. Now this is the full fuel, and our ships are all fully fueled. And so that is the the range when they're full of fuel. That's where it's going to actually then be at fifty percent range. So we can now see where the fleets control things, which is really big. This is really massive. Um, if we change it to a, uh, an attack fleet, it then changes to a red color. Uh, if we change it to a uh, raiding fleet, it becomes like a purple color. And if it's an invasion fleet, it's a sort of like a, an orangey an orangey type color. So that's sort of where we are with the, uh, with, the, with the different types of fleets and how they do work. I think I'll still set this one back to manual. And also what I do want to do is make sure that the actual fleet ranges are very contained at the start of the game. So at the start of the game, I, want, I just want to make sure that if they do end up on automation, I want them to be set to the same system. Now, when I set them to the same system, this will then no longer kick in. I'll just go to selected fleets again. That's sort of like the default that I like to keep it on. But it's really nice to actually have that one in through there. The uh, next thing that we've got is, uh, so that's actually, those little helpers are, are really quite big. Um, 
Also, we have measurement tools, which we've had in the game for a little while, but I don't think many people know that it's there. If we, if we need to find out how far, like these are pirate bases, for example, how far are they from my from my home system? So I've got like a few different a few different fleets being being built in here. But if I do want to go and send them off, I can just press the shift button, which then brings up displaying distances. Just click on the system in here, and then just drag across. We can then sort of see that's about 73m to to get out to there. This one's 72m. Uh, so we've got a couple of pirate bases there that are with, within 100M, so um, it's not too far off. Uh, other things, uh, what else is there that sort of user interface issues? These are big deals. Um, there's lots of little tweaks being made all the time. The fleets, the the actual AI fleets and, the, and your fleets, if you've got them set to automation, now also behave a lot more intelligently. So there's just lots and lots of changes happening all the time with the game. Uh, right, so let's just go through who we are, what's actually happening. So we'll start off in through here in the government with the Mortal and Aristocratic Union is the uh, is the name that the game actually did set us up with. I am running with a few different mods, by the way. Actually, I might just cover that. Whoops. Which I have to do outside of the system. Let's go back to our main menu. We'll come back in in just a second. So if we got the um, modifications back in through here, and you can see I've got like a fair few actually different things turned on. So um, we've got the uh, annex. Uh, this is like realistic star systems uh, names. Um, we've got, I've got a thing called refresh resources, which just changes the basic basic art of the resources. I really like this mod actually. This is something that. Um, if I was going to be modding the game, this is exactly the mod I would have made. Like it's um, and because it's exactly the mod I did make for the, uh, well, not exactly, but it, pretty much the same mod I made for Distant Worlds One uh, when I was doing all my modding for, uh, in that game. Uh, but this is this is great. This is really really done very very well. Um, Realistic Empire names as well, which is what why we're sort of seeing them. We've got Realistic Empire names for the DLC as well. So there's uh, so that there's you, so they sort of work together. Uh, refresh components facilities. This changes the same graphics. Uses AI to generate different graphics for different things, and then also the flags as well, which I haven't got turned on at the moment. Um, yeah, adds additional flags for players. This this broke something, but this is a long time ago. I think it might be safe for me to turn that one back on again now. It sort of um, the flags were part of the empire setups. And unless that's been fixed up, um, it's a bit, bit difficult to go off. And um, I can't, I, I couldn't trust it at the, at when it first came out because of, because the um, it changed the actual factions. But I'm guessing that that will be updated now as well, which I, I would then turn that one back on again. Uh, but that's then going to break the next updates that, that do come. So maybe I'll keep that one off. Uh, unfortunately, the the empires and their flags are all part of one uh, one file. Um, so home more bits. How are you going? So anyway, and I've just put this into a collection course called Daz at the stage. So um, that's you can sort of collect them and have them sort of turned on or off uh, depending on how things go. You've got like you know different sorts of different profiles you can actually have for your mods. Anyway, that's where we are. Let's just go back and continue this actual game again. We'll load her in and then just go forward. So uh, where we are, we are playing as I said before the Mortal and Aristocratic Union. We have a lot of cash on hand because we're playing. We started off the empires all started with a lot of um, a lot of a, a big presence already in the in the in the galaxy. We're playing with a double ring galaxy. Is the actual galaxy that we're playing in? Uh, the um, the cash flow is positive at seventy six thousand. You can see that up the, through there as well at the stage. So we certainly are not going to be having any money problems initially um, and that's important like to actually have that one if that then also then means that we actually uh, with our funding levels if we just quick, quickly go across to here uh, we're trying to put the excess you can see we've got colony growth and research now the research if you just leave it on automation um, what it'll do is it'll just try to spend the most it can in research, which is only 1% required to get the maximum. And so it'll just keep on tweaking these numbers to get the most out of, out of research, the most we can put into research. And the rest of the excess will then be placed into colony growth. 
but we only use a small amount of that. So, um, so it's not it, like it's just that that's just the way that the automation, uh, if you leave it on, on automated, it just does that itself. And this is important that we ended up having this one. Um, yeah, uh, the amount currently used for, for research is 868. Potential maximum is more than available. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it's basically the same amount though. So it's not going to change all that much. Um, not that we need to really worry about it. Let's just go straight through to uh, the government that we have. We're playing feudalism. Now this is going to be a problem for us with our with our um, uh, with our troops. We can expect rebellions uh, every twenty odd years in the game, so we have to be careful. Uh, so in around about twenty seven seventy, we have to start being extremely cautious in the actual game itself. Uh, we have bonuses to population growth. War weariness goes up by 35% based on feudalism. Actually, my, probably the best thing to do will not be to look at this one here. One of the other changes that has come in, this is a major, major change, is that each, every single government type now has a, a unique aspect about them or has been changed in, in meaningful ways. So if we, for example, have a look at our feudalism, uh, we've got upgraded militia. So defending militia troops are much stronger than usual, providing better defense against invaders. When one of your colonies is conquered, any rebellion, rebellion against the invaders will also produce stronger military troops as they attempt to return to your empire. Now, this is a double-edged sword for when we get uh, civil rebellions, because it means that the um, rebelling troops are very, very powerful. Uh, so when you're playing as a, this this makes the um, playing as a feudalism, uh, like, and I think it'll show down in here, every 20 years we have a coup d'etat or thereabouts, uh, and it's highly disruptive, which means that you, you can disintegrate into civil war very, very quickly. Now, civil war in this game essentially means that your planets are going to be flipping and they're going to be um, and it was flipping to the nearest neighboring fa uh, faction which was diabolically bad um, so i think that that's now been changed where they become independent or something like that there's th i think there's more nuance to the way that they can then be sort of uh, when they do flip how much they can flip to but it means we have to have a, like a lot of troops um on the ground for these for these um, rebellions, and they're going to continue a little bit for a period of time. This is a this is a major disruption uh, every twenty odd years. So so we need we need troops on the ground, um, and leaders replaced from a, like a new character. Essentially, just it rises from the ashes and uh, and takes over. Uh, and, like as as in the it becomes the new leader of our of our, our actual faction. So we don't last. They don't last very long. Uh, next thing we have is feudal obligation, so d double troop recruitment rate for two years after a war starts. So if anyone does declare war against us, we're going to be able to then boost our troop, troop re uh, replacement a lot. And privateer navy, so noble uh, within your empire, will fund construction and operation of a small number of escorts to defend civilian shipping. These ships are, are uh, funded from your private economy, uh, so purchase and maintenance they cannot be manually controlled. And so in, this is a really interesting one with feudalism because we now have these, we have different um, ships, like this ship here, for example, what's this one here? This is a, this is a um, heavy escort. Yeah, it's, it's, it's moved away from where all my fleets are. It's just traveling in space and it's just moving out. This is under feudal control. And so I don't control this ship at all. It just does its own thing. And so it's got a little star next to it, just letting us know that it's under feudal control. So these, it's only with feudalism that you end up getting this, but this is um, really, really quite interesting. So anyway, that's, uh, that's feudalism, uh, the way feudalism actually works. Uh, having a look at just a couple of the others, just so you can sort of see what they're, what they're like. Monarchy is another interesting one. Um, that one, you can see how the, the differences between how things actually work between the two. But this one ends up with a flagship. So you end up with, uh, can designate one military ship as your empire flagship. Flagships have a plus 10% targeting countermeasures, ship maneuvering, blah, blah, blah. So um, now what actually happens in here? When your flagship is destroyed, your empire receives a one year happiness penalty. To assign a military ship as your flagship, right click on the ship for a pop-up menu option, which is really quite fun. Actually, sorry, when, you're, when your flagship destroys an enemy military ship of equal or greater size, your empire receives a one year happiness bonus. So everyone is hoping that the flagship is gonna do well, <laughs> which is really, really cool. 
yeah, prismatic flux is saying private military. Now that's fascinating. Yeah, it's it's really really interesting uh, the way it sort of it's the way it sort of works. But um, so but this one as well. It's just there's so much. Um, interesting. So if you're playing as a monarchy, always justified. All wars you declare always considered justified by your population. That's slowing the, the growth rate for, for war weariness. So again, monarchies can now... And this is not just for the group we're playing it with. This is across the board if you choose a monarchy. Um, some of the other ones like democracy and republic don't have that much, or it doesn't appear to be that much, but they have then these different bonuses. So they end up with different colony incomes um, depending on the agreements. Like so, if you if you're setting up that one was a republic. So republics are all about trade. Uh, you can see there's no bonuses. We don't actually end up with the um, with any special features there. Uh, when a um, when they have their elections every eight years, there's a mild boost to the population. They have a 10, 10 boost going uh, along through there. Uh, they pre-build their uh, planetary administration center, which is actually massive. Like that's a big, big deal. Uh, research completed planetary governance. So you would start off. You start off with, and this is really the the next one that we want anyway. So again, republic. Even though it doesn't do weird and wonderful stuff like this, it still has um, some really, really cool stuff with its treaties. Um, democracy is an example. Um, going back into here as well. This one is probably the most boring of all of them. <laughs> it's saying, um, enterprising spirit, chance of a periodic random positive event that temporarily improves research, diplomacy, espionage, or the military occurs approximately once every 10 years on average. So, yeah, ho-hum. Yeah, ho-hum with that one. <laughs> this one does have space construction so, and things like that. So that's democracy. So democracy is a bit, bit, um, a bit weak in terms of some of the others. Military dictatorship is another interesting one. Uh, this one here has got like war worlds. Can manually and, um, initiate a temporary war world uh, event at one of your colonies for a plus 100% uh, boost to troop recruitment, ship construction, and facility construction, but with reduced colony happiness. The uh, war world lasts for two years and costs 20,000 credits to initiate. So that's interesting. Uh, and then also uh, reassuring security. So high troops, presence of your colonies adds plus five to happiness. I wish we had that, actually, to be honest, uh, with, with, what, with, with what's happening. Um, and I haven't tried gaming the game in terms of, um, of playing as the feudal system and flicking at 19 years to something else and then flicking back again. I haven't, haven't tried doing that. I, I won't do it, but that's, I don't know if that would get you out of the, um, away from the coup d'etat. I mean, I guess it is a coup d'etat when you actually flip to something else anyway, so maybe maybe it wouldn't work anyway. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's the just a bit of a rundown, but every single, fact, every single uh, government type, including the ones we can't see here, have all been tweaked, so just be aware of that. Uh, we're not going to be doing anything else there. We're not going to be sw switching across. Uh, bonuses, this just summarizes the different bonuses. Now, some of the things, for example, like war weariness reduction, you can see there, plus 75. Um, when I hover over that one, we've got 40% uh, because we're playing as the Mortalins and 35% uh, from feudalism government as well. Now, the Mortalins, I don't think there's an easy way to see them as such. Um, this is our leader. Um, no, there's, there's not. I'll have to show you that somewhere separate. I'll quickly go through and just finish off the policy settings. This is your automation settings. Uh, what I have done is set the base construction to automation. I'm allowing the just the because I'm because I'm swimming swimming in money. They can just build what they what they like. And I've just turned all of the uh, fleet formations, postures, and management to manual because that's what I enjoy. You don't have to. Uh, the game does a good job of designing ships. Does a good job of managing fleets. So you don't have to do that one. Yeah, Dusty Monk saying, avoid the 20 year coup by initiating a coup. Solid strategy. <laughs> hey, I've just woken up. Actually, I can't use that excuse anymore. It's now been half an hour. So, uh, <laughs> so no, I, sh I should be, uh, I shouldn't be, I'm, I'm just saying the first thing that comes into my mind, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So my two cents, you all are saying, um, have they fixed the resource flotations, huge drop in resources? I'm not sure what you mean, actually. Um, uh, Prismatic Flux is saying, I can't be cooed if you're being cooed, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's what does happen when you do it. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. I've, I've um, Have they fixed the 
the uh, resource flux uh, flotations huge drops in resources I'm not sure maybe you have to just explain that a little bit better um, or a little bit differently for me uh, I'm not understanding that one I've, I um, uh, like we can we can watch like particularly in this early part of the game we can watch where we do actually have problems and steel will be our first our big first issue that we actually end up having uh, but um, we're sort of underway with everything in the game um, so um, uh, uh, that's saying the first thing that comes to mind is that they, is that they wish they'd um, that they'd remastered the Xenox I don't like the Xenox to be honest uh, like they're, they're my least fac favorite faction even even more than I even dislike them more than the Tekans, which is saying something. <laughs> I just I find them boring. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the uh, at the Galactopedia, and uh, look at the um, at the alien races, just so we can go through what's happening with the Mortalans. Now, the, with this big update, this is called the Game Faction Update, and it's not all of the all of the existing ones. This is actually now the new. Uh, sorry, this is the like they've now tweaked. The Mortalans and the humans from the originals to make them more in line with things like the Dayuts, uh, which have you know they've got their own sort of like special things. The um, Gizareans, which have got their own sort of special aspects. So they've done the same now with humans. So the humans essentially, just to very quickly go through it, have got all sorts of different um, bonuses that they can now do when you play as the humans. But we're playing as the Mortalans, and so in ours, what end up happening through here? Is that we end up with uh, this is I'll just go through these for the mortal ones. This is quite interesting. So warrior wave when you declare war, obtain a two year boost to mortal and population growth, along with your choice of either a large troop recruitment rate boost or a troop attack strength boon boost. So when we go to war, the whole population, the whole reptilian population, falls into line and just sort of keeps on keeps coming up behind. Uh, patriotic wave when war is declared on you obtain a two-year boost to mortal and population growth along with your choice of either colony corruption reduction or war weariness reduction so depending on whichever way it's going to happen it's either a warrior wave if we if we declare war or a patriotic wave if war is declared on us know your enemy so when you invade and conquer an enemy world choose a two-year boost to either espionage and counter espionage or targeting and countermeasures so either protecting through spies or through attacking through ships. Uh, prove yourself. So periodically choose between two characters from leader, admirals, and generals to undergo a trial by arms. If successful, the, um, the uh, selected uh, character gains a positive trait, otherwise a negative trait. And reinforced hulls. So all ships and spaceports hulls have a plus one reactive armor rating, which um, can be like that's that can be big survival. It doesn't sound like much, but that can ultimately help with this early game survivability, which is actually fairly cool. Uh, we've got different unique traits, which I won't bother going through how these actually sort of do work. But it's um, it's interesting now the way that it, like there's just a lot more nuance with these factions, and then the other factions will be will be deep being done as well, like the Xenox, the Tekans, the um, uh, not the Slukans, uh, the um, Boscara, for example, these are the, the Actarians. These will ult ultimately end up getting their special stuff at some point. It's just that you know, there's a fair bit. They, they're um, they're being very careful and cautious with the way, what they're like, you know, with what they're introducing in. Which is, I think I'm really, I really love what they've done with this faction. It's better than what I thought it was going to be, to be honest. All of these different changes. So it's really, really quite cool. Um, so uh, my two cents are saying uh, fluctuation. Um, yeah, I did read it as fluctuations. So, uh, but I'm um, sorry. Uh, fluctuations. That's what I need uh, when it, when uh, then a mod to change it makes it more stable. Oh, I think I, I think it's because it because of the wild uh, uh, drops in the in the actual what's happening. I think that that's that just comes down to because every single resource has to exist uh, at all times. But there is something you can do about that. And I'll show you that actually when we get into it. So, um, so Fury Kitten is saying I, I still like playing my my uh, little space rats, even if my army is a little a little. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's uh, they're interesting, but I just I, I do prefer these bigger meatier sort of factions. We've got the Xenox next to us back over through here. Just to quickly go through the empires that we're that we're playing, we have the Xenox next to us. That's the only other faction that we're aware of. They're fairly spread out with their empire. Uh, there is actually an interesting world back in through here somewhere. Where are we? 
that we are aware of. Maybe it's further over. I'll just go and just go to the resources actually. And I'll just go and change this one to luxury resources. And we'll have a look at um, these are all the ones we don't actually have any control over. Z uh, Caribbean Spice. Yeah, okay, there's a Caribbean Spice world in here. And uh, there it is right there. And so um, this one here is actually under Mortal, sorry, under Xenox control. And so we'll be wanting to get hold of this, this world. This will become an important um, war objective for us at some point. So we've got that one through there. That's one of the big, that's a Spice world, uh, which will be one of the unique uh, um, planets in the Empire. It's already in the in the game. There's also we also know the um, the where the Loris we've got a Loris fruit. We've got one source that we're aware of with Loris fruit, and if I click on Loris fruit, it is way down over here, a long way away. But we don't know if anyone actually controls this one just yet. But this um, this mangrove forest planet does contain lo um, they're, they're the special resources that that we will be wanting to get hold of. A little bit later on, but that's there's certainly things now. I'm assuming that there's gonna be another empire down here that we just haven't met yet that will control the uh, that particular resource. We don't have access to it just yet. Uh, actually, maybe that maybe there isn't another faction that's down there just at this stage. Um, now, in terms of uh, colonies, we'll have a quick look at the um, at the different colonies that we actually have. So we've got like a fair few colonies that we've sort of started off with. We also then have new colonies are available. You can see there's a lot of new colonies that are, that are showing up in this particular list. Now, if I go and set this one up to suitability 20 plus, we then end up with just a, a handful, but including the Yaga system. And so if we can make, like slowly make our way across to, um, to build on these, on these four worlds. Uh, so Yaga 3 is, you can see it's too far away. It's beyond our colonization range. Uh, same with Karina 1. So this one's beyond our colonization range as well. But if we end up with this world through here, um, Agara, um, that's gonna be under this, in this, in this particular system, this is a moon. Uh, if we end up with that one, that will then extend us out to be able to then pick up the Karina one, which will then extend us across to Yaga. So eventually we can make our way across there. So um, that's sort of where we are. Um, yeah, time to speed run towards this, says Sev. Oh, that's the other thing too. The, um, the actual game settings now go up to eight times rather than four times and down to one eighth of a, of a time as well. So you do actually have a whole range of different things with your um, with your time controls as well, because people have been asking for that. So um, now one of the, it is actually asking us to build a colony ship. Um, I'm not sure, it's probably gonna to wanna to go to uh, Gamea 5. Um, and I think what I'll do is, this one's beyond where the pirates are. There's a group of pirates in here I need to deal with them before I start to really build these. I think I'm going to, I'll, I'll tell it, like we've, it, it's asked us to build one, but let's just go and build a colony ship in here. This one should be relatively safe, except against the Xenox. Let's just don't go and do it. So we'll come back for this one afterwards, but we will be wanting to get the Loris fruit and uh, and then also you know head the other way um okay so that's where we are i'm just going to decline that one because we're doing it anyway i think we are now just double check if we just go back into um into colonies and then just look at the colony ships i oh, know it didn't do it okay we are gonna have to build an uh, have to just go and, and tell it to build one um yeah, no, it'll it'll build it itself. It'll because I've told it to go that way. I don't want to tell it to go this way just yet until we've dealt with the pirates, which is going to be a little way, a little way off. New escort completed. So we're building up fleets. I'll just quickly go through what we what we're actually building up and what the strategy actually is with these. Just go and right click on those. The um, so we've, you can see I've got like a whole range of different sorts of fleets showing up in this in this area. Like if I sort of zoom out, I've got four fleets established. And these have all been just set to defense at this stage. I am gonna set my first fleet. I'm just gonna go and grab the first fleet and just make that into a defense a defensive fleet as well. And we don't want it at 50% fuel range. We wanna have this one set to the um, same system. 
just so it'll protect whatever system we, we actually place it in. And so this is these are designed, uh, or will be designed to really look after and protect against pirates. But we do actually have a pirate raid happening in the Windows system uh, right now. So there's a whole group of ships coming in against this mining station. And so we had a look at this when I was live streaming on the um, on the Slytherin channel yesterday. These are coming in. Let's just let them finish off their raid. There's really nothing we can do about this. So we'll just unpause the game and let that happen. Um, and there's not... Um, these are Quamino pirates. And uh, one of the things with Quamino pirates, when we have a look at their ships, uh, they do actually have what's called uh, bubble shields. They've got like a, a race-specific shield, which has only got a 5% penetration chance. And we weren't... I wasn't planning around going up against pirates like this. These mean we have to overwhelm them with numbers of ships because their shields are so good. And so, uh, but we will be able to do that. But we'll see how, we'll eventually see how we go. So that's the range of their ships. They've got bigger ships coming in. There's a, um, a bigger ship there with a big, uh, like long lance missiles. Um, if we just cover this one through here, you've got the lance missile, which is the big red one. The um, Sentinel Beam is the blue one that's back further in there. There's also Maxos Blast, which is the other red one through there. Now it's wanting us to build the constructor. I'm going to say yes. And um, new escort completed. We're going to get a lot of these. We're, we're building up our fleets. So we're just... And while the fleets are building up, I'm not going to go off and do any attacking. I'm just going to let the, let the pirates do their thing for a little while. Hi ZXM, how are you going? Um... So my two cents is in saying, I hope they remake the Star Trek mod. Yeah, that'd be really, really cool. It's a lot harder in this one than it was in Distant Worlds 1. Uh, Democracy and Republic make a lot of money. Yeah, they do. They do. So, um, and I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about the resources in just a minute, but the, there is something you can do. I'm going to let the, I'm going to let the game um, just get away from me a little bit, and then we'll uh, talk about it, because that should then give us what exactly what you're suggesting, like a... a um, a deficiency with our resources. So they've um, now these have got nothing else to do. Now they're going off to raid other ships. Um, raid the Curious Impulse. Yes, yeah, so they're coming in to actually um, take on freighters now. <laughs> so they're um, they're continuing on their wicked ways. And this is going to be the pirate faction that we're going to need to deal with. What's that one doing? That one's uh, raiding Profound Moon. So these are going off to uh, to raid little ships that it's finding. Uh, this is a, um, a, 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 a... Look, our ships will run away, basically, so we don't have to worry too much about what's happening in through there. We do actually have a system in here, but we don't actually have... Um, like we don't have much... Like we, this is one of those situations where we can't really build a hell of a lot at this particular location. So if we have a look at the actual fleets, we don't have any presence here other than just like the circular ships, which means just civilian ships in this particular system. All four fleets that we have are, are being formed back over here. And then we're going to have to send one of these across to actually look after the wind system to help with those pirates. Maybe even two of them across there because uh, we need to sort of get things happening fairly quickly. Let's have a look at our ships. Uh, we're building two different types of ships. So our first fleet is trying to go off and retrofit, but it hasn't been able to squeeze into the spaceports yet. The, the second fleet is still building ships up, so we're still waiting for ships to come in. So this is in the process of, of building. The third fleet is in the same category, and the fourth fleet is getting close to being finished. And so this is these being built at different uh, spaceports. So this is the Fiari I3. Uh, that one's the uh, Sacafago Saga, spaceport. Uh, this one here is the um, Fiari I2 spaceport. And then this one here was also at Sacafago. So we've got three different spaceports where these ships are being built from in this system because we actually have a fair few, we've got four planets essentially in this system. Um, so my two cents are saying resources would drop drastically like 80% to 40%. Oh, do you mean the mining rate? The mining rate shouldn't drop. That's... Um, that would be a bug that which I'm sure would have been fixed if that was if that was something that um, that was happening. If it's the mining rate, if you mean like you you go to a planet and it's got like 20% mining rate, 61% mining rate, and 20% in through there, 
If you mean that they suddenly drop, that's not something I've heard of. Um, so I'd be very surprised if that ha actually happened. Um, we can't build research stations at this stage. So yeah, I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, so Redigar saying, I only see that when mining station designs being upgraded en masse. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, or uh, like a slow drop, it's a huge drops, which shouldn't happen at all because um, the mining rate on the planets, the planets are infinite with their resources. It's, they don't run out. So um, it shouldn't drop. Uh, Michael is saying highly doesn't chat unless, of course, it's something where the, um, where the mining rate of the mining operation that you have changes because that can happen. Like you've got, um, you do actually have mining rates in here. Where are they? You've got basic mining in through this other side, which does give you a mining rate. Uh, large mining engine gives you 12 mi um, per second back in through here, then makes the, the large mining engine version 2 go to 16 per second. But it's still the mining rate as such doesn't change. It's just the um, the mining rate, it, like the, as in the amount that can extract from that percentage is the uh, is the important thing. Um, yeah, the Redigar saying, I don't think I've ever seen a planet value change. No, I, I've never seen that. So... Um, uh, ever so, I, I, like, that's not something that I've never ever noticed at all. But as you, as your, um, you know, I don't know about the, the rates changing. Um, I've never seen that with anything, to be honest. If it is the mining rates you're talking about, if it is, on the other hand, something, for example, like the um, on this planet here, we're building, like we've got a, um, we've got a big building queue of different frigates and and escorts and things, sort of under under, um, uh, you know, awaiting construction. Which means that the, and we've now got nine resource shortages. If you mean that these resources drop a lot, the, yes, that does happen depending on what the usage is. So we've still got 683 steel there, even after all of these have been um, queued up. And there's probably going to be stuff on the, on the world as well that will, be, um, that will be being built. So the world is building small freighters and so on and so forth, mining ships are all being built on this particular one just from the private sector. So they're using the world, we're using the spaceport for the uh, military ships. But in this case, um, yeah, there's, um, like that will happen. Uh, yeah, uh, my planet resources value change all the time. Wow, I've never seen it. Never ever seen it. So that, that seems, seems very much like a bug. <laughs> um, so Prismatic Flux is saying, is it possible it's a mod you have installed? Two cents? Yeah, because that's not something I've ever ever seen, um, ever. Um, not even, not even as a bug. I'm, I'm not aware of it. Not that I read all the bug reports, but it's something that I'm, I'm not familiar with at all. All right, let's continue on. So um, now, as we, uh, we'll just let the pirates do their thing back in in this um, in the in the um, is it the window system. Yeah, in the window system, they can just sort of uh, they can have control of this until we're ready. No point going in piecemeal against anything, uh, whether it be pirates or enemies, always make sure that you've got like a, um, a, a command. Now this is a, um, this is a feudal ship, a feudal escort, which is under construction. Probably be destroyed, I would guess. Base raided, so they actually picked up some Krypton from the bases. These are now more in, uh, more meaningful, like when they do raids, they don't just pick up everything. They, um, they only pick up stuff, either money or whatever resource you had, that's why it's not too much of a concern when they do go after bases. Is it the one that they went for? No, it was this one over here, I think. No, it wasn't. I forget which one they went for. Actually, where is that one going? I don't know. It's going off. Now, they'll be refueling at this location. We will be wanting to go and take that one over once we just get established with our, with our anti-pirate fleets. So the pirates will be, will be making use of that one. Oh, sorry, it's paused. I'll just unpause. Yeah, I've got a bit of um, bit of happening over this other side. Okay, we've got bonuses there as well. We're just discovering different things. The pirates will be back just to keep on raiding, and hopefully by that stage we've then got our four fleets established. So. Um, 
so T uh, Tiferius is saying, I still play Distant Worlds 1. Is this way better? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, like, it's sort of one of those things. Distant Worlds 1 was an absolute classic. Um, and look, people have got reasons that they still play Distant Worlds 1. A big one being that they don't have all the factions in Distant Worlds 2. Uh, the factions are much, much more fleshed out than what Distant Worlds 1 had. In a nutshell, what you get with Distant Worlds 2 is a 3D... Um, a 3D environment and uh, you're thinking okay well who cares like you know basically it's all still and one thing I'd like when, when, when they when they first built Distant Worlds 2 my greatest fear when I knew that they were going to 3D was that we weren't going to be able to do this and see everything on a nice flat plane see how everything's on a, on a flat plane so many games when they go from 2D to, to um, like a 2D like you know sort of a top down view into a uh, into a flat plane view end up uh, sorry, into a um, into a 3D view, end up making a Z level uh, for the all the different planetary systems, and I hate that in games. And uh, that would have been a reason that I would never have played Distant Worlds 2, to be honest. But they didn't do it, which I really I'm so thankful be to, that they didn't. So they they've kept everything on a nice nice flat plane, so you can still play it 2D, 2D like you can still play it as a top down game if you're wanting to. And okay, you're thinking, okay, well, then what's the difference? The difference is really what comes down with the ships. And so when we have a look at our fleet, if I go to the, my first fleet, which is hovering around the um, the home system, still, still trying to retrofit, by the way, uh, they're all just queued up inside the uh, inside these areas. What fleets are these from? This is a second. If we just click, uh, click on the second, we're still waiting for some of the heavy escorts to be built with this one through here. But this is uh, this second fleet is just sitting around waiting for stuff to actually happen. Where the game absolutely shines now is um, is the is the three D um, the three D aspect of the ships and how that actually then works in combat. Because um, with the top down with the with the top down view that we used to have in Distant Worlds One, uh, what used to happen was that like when you actually built a ship the building of the ships is different as well this is also something that people didn't like when they first started playing distant worlds 2 because it was different it's actually a much much better system but in distant worlds 1 you had a lot less restriction on how you could then build your ships but i don't know if you remember reading uh, like if you ever read the forums of distant worlds 1 there was always complaints about the different roles that your ships could have and how you were constrained to certain things because of what you're doing but you had very you had a lot less restriction on what you could build on the actual ships yourself. In in this case, there's a lot more restriction with the building. It still looks like it could be played as a top down, but it's actually it's not the case. If we go and have a look, for example, at the um, at the frigates, uh, like this is the the frigate that we're built that we're building, and we designed this this frigate up. This is our missile frigates, and so. What these actually, sorry, this should be a torpedo frigate, not a missile frigate. We've got torpedoes that we've placed on here. So the ship that ship design itself, and the thing that, I remember when I first looked at the ship, des, ship designer and also the actual ships in combat, the thing that makes Distant Worlds 2 so much better than Distant Worlds 1, just in the combat aspect alone, is the fact that every single hard point has now got a facing. And so even though we've got like torpedoes, which um, are seek, like you can see fire type there is seeking. It's, um, it, so this one can still fire behind it. A lot of the other weaponry can't. Like, so if we have a look, for example, we've got an iron cannon. We've got an iron cannon at the back. It can only fire from the back of the ship, and it has 180 degrees um, range around the back of the ship. So it can't fire at ships that it's approaching. It has to get close to ships, and then it can use the iron cannon. So the iron cannon disables enemy ships so in this case we're using an iron cannon to try to disable but not as part of our main armament their main armament consists of two of the uh, epsilon torpedoes which are which are medium mounts and uh, we also then have a essential uh, multi-beam defense which is a point defense system which is a beam attack and so it also because of the because of the facings it can't protect the rear of the ship and this is a major deal as well because Ultimately, I'm going to need to. I should have had another point defense in th on this other side, but I ran out of space. I'm right at, I'm at the ma maximum. So, what's going to give? In the ship, we have uh, like a few different areas. Anything that's white is the internals of the ship. So, the internals consist of fuel cells. In this case, I wanted to have an assault pod so I could take over enemy ships uh, with this particular one, which is where the um, which is where the iron def uh, iron cannon helps enormously. 
the uh, so we've got you've got limitations with what you can build in them, but it's it's very very meaningful. Uh, a lot of these you don't have really a lot of choice with, and so all of the stuff that you're building is over through here, giving you all the different bonuses. Every single component in the ship actually gives you some sort of aspect, you know, whether it be the, like, you know, we've only got three engines, for example. We do have capability to put more engines on, I think, in this design, which means we can go faster, but again, at the cost of what to give us our space? So in this case, it's, it's um, like, it, it, you know, we have to really think hard. How, what's the role of this ship and how do we make it then go and work? And so in this case, I've gone with torpedoes to try to break open uh, enemy ships. And uh, because torpedoes will actually have a bit of an armor bypass, which means that they'll start to um, hit the into the hull and actually start to do damage to these white, the, like, you know, these white sections in the actual enemy ships themselves. So then you've got your engines, you've got your, mis your weaponry, you've got your uh, defenses, and then you've also then got like a, um, a sensor. Now, we only have one sensor on these small ships. As we get to the bigger class ships, we end up with a lot more that we can do. Now, one of the big things that they've changed, so, so the facings of the, um, of the actual weapons is when you actually play a battle slowly and look at what actually happens with the facings, it's incredible. The difference between Distant Worlds 1 and Distant Worlds 2 simply because of this aspect, of it, like, and that, that could have been done as a top-down, like it still could have worked that way. In the, in the original game, um, everything just fired from the middle of the ship uh, and all the way around, 360 degrees, no matter what it was. And it's fun. when you play with it like this, you've got to now start to plan for the different types of enemies that you come across. And so every enemy you come across, you've got to really think carefully, how do I actually protect my ships against what they're good at? And so um, those bubble shield generators, for example, that we saw on those enemy ships, are the worst weapon that you can use against those bubble shield generators uh, are torpedoes. And, uh, we, but we didn't know that when we designed the ships. And so these ships have got the torpedoes on the ship. And so the reason that these torpedoes are the worst possible thing you can actually have against a bubble shield generator is because you'll see about two thirds of the way down, it says uh, shield bypass, negative 40%. And so, you think, okay, well, that's just any old shield. So what does it matter for, for the bubble shield? It just means the bubble shields are stronger than normal shields. And they also have uh, a one in 20 chance to bypass them. Whereas normal shields for us, if we have a look at our deflection shield generator, we've got 20% shield penetration chance, which means a one in five shot will actually completely avoid the, um, the, the shields anyway. So using torpedoes in the early part of the game, when you are getting those 20%, shield penetration chance, and 50% of the damage is then bleeds through onto the armor. With a torpedo, one in five torpedo shots, even though they're terrible against the shields, when they hit armor, 40, like it, it's, it's got 40% of the damage that gets to the armor will then bleed through into the hull and then do more damage inside the ship. And so I sort of rely on torpedoes a lot for this, like in the early part of the game, because uh, what they can do is they do actually, well, first of all, they're seeking, uh, so they can sort of they can fire from any angle and catch them that way. They've usually got a pretty good range, so you've got like 1,600 range. Uh, but the it, the only problem is that shield, and you re but you rely on the one in five shot is going to miss the shield, get onto the armor, bleed through into the hull. And so there's a heap of stuff that goes on in here. Uh, but... When you come up against pirates like the ones that we've just come up against, their, their, uh, their, their shield penetration chance isn't 20%, it's 5%. So instead of one in five shots getting through, it's one in 20 shots get through. And so it's much, much more difficult for torpedo ships like this to be able to then deal with them. And so uh, this one, this, th so this makes a massive difference. Also, like if we're playing up against the Akdarians, um, who are very, very strong with fighter craft, uh, or a few of them have actually got strong fighter craft as well, but the Akdarians in particular, our ships would be useless against their fighters because we don't have any protection. Like you can see there on our ship, we don't have any protection at all with our point defense in the rear of the ship. And so we'd have to rethink that if we were, if, 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 if the Akdarians were our neighbors and we were likely to go to war with them, I'd probably have to get rid of one of my torpedoes and put another sentinel um, 
point defense system on the back of the ship. So there's a lot of nuance uh, that Distant Worlds 2 brings to combat because of the 3D environment uh, and because of the facings. And that's just one little aspect. But there's so much in it. There's so much in it. It still has got the... Um, it's easier to understand the building of ships because of all the helpers they've put on it. They, now, they've had similar, very similar things in Distant Worlds 1, but um, everything sort of now... You can sort of... You can see absolutely everything. By the way, um, there is a, a resources required to build. This is why your resources run out so quickly. And you can see there, this costs 130 steel. The res like every like the, this little um, this resources required to build is not arbitrary. Every single component, like if I go and click on the central multi or look at the central multi beam, this one requires three krypton to be able to build just this one component. We require seven krypton in the actual ship. So something else is using krypton. Um, if we have a bit of a look, um, let's see if I can find it. I don't, yeah, there we go. There's the other uh, four. So the deflection field generator uses four krypton to be able to build that component, along with the sentinel, which, which is the three. There's our seven krypton. So the resources in in the game. Now this is the same in Distant Worlds one as well, by the way. So this is not a, a this is this is more just going back to why you run out of resources, particularly with steel. So much of the ship is going to be using steel, like six steel for that one, six steel for that one. Um, Energy collector, silicon, crew systems, six steel. So uh, the engine, six steel. So there's a lot of the steel will end up being a big component. Also, just the hull itself uh, will also have a steel and polymer, I think, is a component. I'm not seeing it through there, but there is actually a, the, the basic hull itself. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not see it in through there. But anyway, that's it there. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, you sort of very things. Wow, there's so much more depth. There is, and it's sort of it's funny. Even though we have less uh, factions that that we play against, the factions have now been fleshed out enormously as well. So it's um it's just a it's a much more it's a much more it's a actually the other other issue <laughs> for people who play Distant Worlds one who who don't come to Distant Worlds two who basically say I'm never going to play Distant Worlds two because the planets don't orbit. So when they actually have a look at this, the um, the planets are stuck in their orbits. They don't actually. You know how in Distant Worlds one they would slowly rotate around the um, around the bodies, and the moons would slowly rotate as well. That's all gone. It's now just frozen in space. Now I originally, when I started playing the game, like when it first came out, I thought I was going to have a problem with that, but I don't have a problem with it at all. I don't even think about it anymore. But it does come up a lot with people who don't go to Distant Worlds 2, saying that that's, the, that's one of the reasons that they don't go across. But um, it's just too much for the game to figure out in terms of um, like some systems you're going to be sharing and, and so the borders would then be sort of rotating around as well. And it did it sort of in Distant Worlds 1 the way it did do that, but it's just it's just awkward. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's my two cents are saying, yeah, uh, it's me, this is Distant Worlds 2, not 1, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, so you were thinking about something different? Okay, that's all right. Uh, Justin's saying, uh, ballistic weapons, uh, uh, do you have to store ammo and can it only carry so much? No, that's abstracted. So it's like any any ammunition. The way that the way it works, actually, I, I will talk a bit more about this. The way it worked, and similarly with Distant Worlds 1, so this is actually an aspect of Distant Worlds 1. When you build a... Um, actually, what have I got? I've got... That's my... Uh, I'll just go to one of the other designs... That we've got around the place. So, um, so that's the frigates were built this way. The escorts are, are a smaller ship. We've got a heavy escort, and so this one here is using Thuon beams, which is again still actually it's, uh, it's it, like the answer is no. Like in this case, a beam doesn't use anything anyway. Actually, if we just go back again to the to the missile frigate. But these torpedoes, they don't have to store torpedoes on the ship. But what they do have is that there's an energy requirement to fire the weaponry, and so um, and so the 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 way that it abstracts um, uh, fuel, uh, sorry, the way it abstracts ammunition is through keeping your reactors running. So if your reactors stop running, you can't fire the weapons. And so in this case, this should be something. See how it's got um, uh, down the bottom there. It's got. Um, Actually, that's the intercept. It's about, again, just under under the armor bypass we were looking at. We can then see energy per shot. 
So every time it fires, it needs to have 30 energy stored up. And so when we have a look at it, the, um, and the energy is the weaponry, is, is essentially building the, um, so even with kinetic weapons, there's still an energy per shot requirement because uh, it's building the it's building the um, the ammo for it and so the way it works with that so rather than having to have all bullets you know stored up everywhere which would just be that would be micromanagement hell trying to do that uh, so it doesn't do that at all uh, but it does do it with energy and so the energy per shot of which I, I don't actually have a um, um, as you may have in some of the other designs if you ever look at the, back at the first fleet, which is still, um, these I think, yeah, these have still got rail guns. These are kinetic, these are kinetic weapons. And so this, this is a, uh, the rail guns are close in um, weapons, uh, are close in um, kinetic weapons. So these fire pellets, essentially. But the, um, so they fire pellets in space, but there's still an energy per shot. You can see that this one's only seven energy per shot, but that's the abstraction for the ammo. And so on this, and I'm retrofitting this design away from railguns and moving it up into um, into the um, the beam weapons is sort of what we're trying to do with this particular with this particular um, design. But uh, what actually ends up happening through here is that we need reactors. So so our react our energy output is in through here. When we're in, uh, this is the hyperspace uh, energy output, and this is the impulse space. So when we go to when we go to war and when we're actually fighting battles, we're using impulse drives. When we're trying to travel through space, we're using the hyperdrive. But you can see the energy is still the same on this ship. We're still getting a, um, uh, the reactor energy output is 124 for this particular ship. And so we see there the, the limits of 124. So but that has to cover all of the usage. Now the usage, and I'll, I'll explain briefly how this one does work. When we're in impulse, you can see we're, we, we've got like a lot of extra energy left over. Almost, well, not almost, we actually have enough. If one of our reactors, we've got two reactors on the ship, if one of our reactors actually um, broke down or was you know, shot out or you know, was damaged and was no longer functioning, our energy output for that ship would then be halved. But it still covers all of the actual usage required. And so the actual energy usage on a ship, they've got re the reactor output, we then got static energy usage. <clears throat> this is keeping the lights on, so th that's to just keep the uh, ship running. It's not even life support, like life support is, is not really a big part of this one. <clears throat> but that's just essentially just keeping the lights on. So if both reactors are knocked out, it doesn't kill the crew or anything, but what it does do is it essentially just stops everything from operating. So crew speed um, energy usage, it's got top speed energy usage of six, uh, back and through there. Shield recharge rates are only three, but the weapon energy usage there is 25.1. So at, for each energy, you know, for the energy coming in, at, when it's firing all its weapons, it's basically ch chomping through 25 point one through there so that would then end up being like we've got the two medium rail guns there we've got the um uh these these do seven energy per shot we've got two of them that's 14 we've got the point defense cannon which is two so we're up to say 16 but uh, the, it's the rate of fire as well like these these fire at um the volley when can it actually fire it's sort of it's interesting like the this is the the um the firing rate is every 2.2 seconds so that also then plays a role so it every 2.2 seconds it requires seven energy to get its shots away and then it's got like a hot it shoots like a, a um, it's not just one shot that gets shot out of you know from the actual weapon i don't think yeah shots per volley is two in this case so every 2.2 seconds it will fire two pellets uh, from each of the guns, so four in total. But this one, so this is sort of not like the energy usage there is not per gun, it's per gun per time, like per time factor, whatever the time factor is. And so that's why it's sort of working out that the um, that the the actual energy usage is twenty five point one. If we go back to one of our other ships, like the torpedo ships, and have a look at the at these, for example, it's a constructor. Look at the missile frigates or the torpedo frigates. And have a look at their energy usage. Um, their um, their weapon usage is thirty point six, but the, the epsilon torpedo, two, still two shots per volley, thirty so heaps more energy per shot than the seven. 
but the actual the firing rate is going to be um, a lot lot less. Firing rate is every 12 seconds, not every two seconds. So the uh, so the kinetic guns fire fast. They do less damage. Um, they they use less energy, but you're using more of it. Now the, the where this one then gets interesting is is if your reactors aren't working. Uh, then you can no longer fire your weapons. So that's how that one works. But also, <laughs> if you run out of fuel, you can't run your reactors. The reactors require fuel to run. And so when you have a look at your fleets, um, if we press the first fleet, this yellow bar is the fuel. So when if you're in of combat and you start to see that you've got no fuel in any of your ships, it means they can't fire their weapons, basically. It means that they can eventually do a little bit every so often, but not very much at all because um, they just don't have the energy to be able to do it. So, um, uh, so you just shine sh sh and saying, "Hey, Daz, is there an in-game tutorial for this?" There sort of is. What it, what they've got is you can actually go and click on this question mark to enter to do a tour of every screen. That's sort of like the tutorial. The reason that there's no in-game tutorial is the game is is so wildly different every time you play it, which is what I love about it. So it's like in terms of getting used to the interface, you do actually have like a, a, a tour of, if we open up anything, there's going to be a tour of that particular screen. Uh, I don't know if it does it with ruins. Uh, no, it does it just for the full exploration. But that's, that they do actually have those that you can sort of then go and do, but nothing much, nothing much else. In, in, like you get, it's quite intuitive now, um, like, you know, sort of the, the user interface. It's still complex, but it's sort of, it's too well, it's too much to um because it can be played so many different ways so um that's why i like doing these videos actually because um i, I can actually answer questions by the way if you do a um if you just write das tactic or at das tactic it will show up in red it doesn't beep at me like it does on twitch unfortunately but it's um uh, Michael's saying uh, Daz Twitch uh, streaming plan is empty, but then when it's next, uh, oh, look, I'm going to be away for five days, so I'm not going to be streaming anything. Um, and Xenonauts 2, I do want to get back to, uh, so that'll be on Twitch here. Yeah, sorry, Michael, I didn't see that that comment there. Um, so my two cents are saying I'd love to steal the, the te technology bubble shield. Yeah, that's why we when we're designing the ships, I'm designing the ships to um, compete against the pirates now. In terms of diplomacy, when we go back to the diplomacy back and through here, and with the pirates, we actually have um, we're, we're playing we're paying these guys off with a protection agreement. So these are Red Fang Raiders, but we're at war essentially with the uh, Quimino Prowlers, who are very very strong. So we're going to have to um, sort of deal with those. Anyway, let's just uh, continue on the game, and wait for something else to happen. But it's um yeah, look, in my opinion. I would never, ever, ever go back to play Distant Worlds One now that now that with what they've brought into Distant Worlds Two, it's it, even with what people don't like about the game. Like as I said before, the no orbits, the um, you know, uh, you know, not really. Like I think a lot of people who don't pick up Distant Worlds One, and I think also one of the reasons that it doesn't rate all that highly on Steam, which blows my mind because this is an incredible game. I think people play the game incorrectly, but if you if you've played Distant Worlds 1, you know it's a simulation game. I think a lot of people have actually picked up Distant Worlds 2 not realising it's a simulation game at its core. A uh, new colony ship has been completed. That's good. Now, we're going to need to send off one of these other fleets. Second, third, fourth. The fourth is now ready to go. This is done completely ready and ready to move off. We're going to have to split these guys up. I might build another fleet um, because we need protection in different areas. I might just talk a little bit about this as well. There's, like, there's been a, a lot of changes that have come into um, our discovery. Oh, okay, here we go. This is a, um, a special resource that we've discovered back in the, uh, in the new system that we're going to be going into. Um, so ZNXM so you're going to be away with a teary face. Yes, I've, I've got to travel just for a few days, uh, but I'll be back. <laughs> so uh, I'll be back. Um, yeah, like, like, but unfortunately, just for the extended weekend. Uh, but then, I, yeah, as I say, I'll be be back bigger bigger than ever uh, when I do get back. But it's, it's just been a lot on at this stage. 
So anyway, the um, we need to probably get another fleet. Now, the way that you can build stuff as well in the game, um, like you can just, like if you're used to Distant Worlds 1, you're probably used to manually going in to different locations, building ships. You can do that. Like if we can go into, for example, the spaceport in here, and think, hey, yeah, you know, what, what? You've got eleven resource shortages now. So, what, if, what have you got in there? Uh, we're, see, we're out of steel, so we can no longer build here. So, we're not going to have enough to be able to build anything at that location. We can go. I'll try, I'll try to find a location that can build something. Uh, these are all being. This one's got seven shortages. It's got no carbonite, so that's what it's out of. It's got a lot of steel, so it can't build either. I put my orders in for um, for uh, building stuff early in the game. Eight shortages in here. Not enough steel. We saw there before it took 130 steel to build at one of the ships, so we can't build at those at those bases. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to build anywhere, to be honest. Uh, but I'll just go through the process of how people would do it. Uh, this one here, we don't actually have a spaceport, so um, if they were going to be building, they've got um, uh, resource shortages, they've got heaps of them. Of re yeah, steel is only three. And so there's things being built. The private sector is, is chewing up a lot of the resources. So I've I've queued up what I wanted, and I, I, I won't be able to get anything else. The, the easiest way I find to manage all your fleets and things is to go to your military tab, <clears throat> which will then will open up like all of your different ships. But this one through here, even though it's sort of funny, like it's the only thing in the game that doesn't have a tool tip but that's your fleet templates back in there it's uh and it should have a tool tip because this is so powerful and so what all i'm doing initially is just building defense fleets and so you can come back into here and go and edit the actual fleets themselves or you know the the, um, the the composition of the fleets and so i've actually put in the frigates and the escorts into here there's another big change uh, from distant worlds one to distant worlds two it's this sort of management has been really really looked at all the way through the game uh, and in this case as well we have different sized hulls which we didn't ever had in distant worlds one so we've, we've got escorts patrol escorts and heavy escorts and these can all be, have different designs and do different things so the heavy escort is what we what's what we're using and so use the latest design for the hull heavy escort and so every time i upgrade the escort these fleets, if they're, if they're made from the defense fleet template, will then also, if they're set to automation, will know that they're supposed to change and retrofit to that next ship. So it, it stops a lot of the, a lot of the um, manual stuff that you had to do in the game. Uh, you can set the engagement ranges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and so this is my composition three and three, which is what we're seeing with the other ones. If I go back out of the um, out of that one through there, I can then select a, a different sort of fleet com composition, and you can tweak these. Like at my attack fleet, for example, if I go and edit that, I don't have. Um, I can get fuel tankers, so I'll probably be wanting those. I don't have carriers. I don't have battleships at this stage. I don't have cruisers. Don't have destroyers. I do have frigates and I do have um, heavy escorts. And I've designed the heavy escorts to help protect the frigates and then the frigates to try to try to take over enemy ships. That's my goal. So if I go and, and like, let's just say we need to have a, an attack fleet set up to um, to go after you know the, the pirate bases, I can just add an, an item into it. And so I've got the escort. This is the role. So the, it's an escort role. But I would be wanting to be very particular with how these in sort of work. So I'm probably wanting to have maybe sort of like eight of each of these, like eight and eight, would be about what I'd be wanting to have in a in a big attack fleet. This is what I'd be requiring to take down one of the pirate bases, as an example. So pretty much doubling, um, more than doubling, what we have in our defense fleets. So defense fleets I'm sort of using against ships, but this is what I'd need to take down a base. Um, and so in this case, I'd have to go through and say, okay, look, make sure it's the latest design of the hull, the frigate hull, and make sure this is the latest of the heavy escorts. I can tell it what ship I want it to be, but the heavy escort hull just means that when I update it, that's going to be updated. I then also would then go through and think, okay, the fleet engagement range. Initially, I do like these set to just the same system or even same location. This has also changed a lot. The tooltips now give you a lot of information uh, when you do a tooltip over this one. It just tells you how big things actually are. Uh, 
in the game. Ships reassigned positions, yeah, that's all okay. Uh, refleet retreat strategy, an enemy fleet 50% greater than our fleet means that we would then sort of run away, which I'm happy enough with that one through there. And so that's that fleet is now done. If I, ha if I have a, the attack fleet selected, I can then try to build that somewhere. Now we know that just by looking at those planets, we're not going to be able to even get anything started, but we want to go back to more defense fleets. So the defense fleet is going to cost me 38,000. I've, I've certainly got more than that. But it's going, to, it's going to be those resources. So if I go build new defense fleet d defense fleet at, and a, a, it's it doesn't come up with a list because nothing can build it. So what it's saying is, look, just get anything you can build and start it. But it's not going to work because I'm pretty sure there's no resources anywhere. I'll just go and it you know, didn't actually start to fire it up. So there's no resources. So it didn't actually work in that instance. So that's the easiest way to, to um, build and manage your fleets. I did manage to build four of them at the start of the game, and that's all we're going to have. So let's just continue on. New escort being completed. So these are all being queued up right at the very, very start, and they're all sort of just coming together. The first is now done. The second, we've still got one more ship to be built. The first is still waiting for retrofits. So they, they may not be able to retrofit because of the lack of steel. So we have to wait for, um, in fact, there's the, there's the engagement range for that particular fleet. Uh, small freighter under attack. Here we go. So now we're going to start to see combat. So these are the Quamino Prowlers. The Quamino have got the bubble shields. And so we're now going to sort of see the bubble shields in action. I'll, I'll do this one as a very, very slow one eighth uh, attack. So you can sort of see what's going on. Now, where is that attack? Small freighter under attack. Yeah, they've come in with a, uh, a lot of a lot of ships so um, so they're coming their fleets have come in yet again um, so they're coming in to attack certain things now what are they trying to do they're trying to raid Arian which is this world now this world is um, um, we only have one troop there I'm gonna have to fix up all the troops uh, automation as well I'll we'll go through that after this so these are all gonna be coming in to try to raid this world and this is where we don't want this to get through. We, we need to be protecting our worlds with both troops and with ships because um, if they do get in, even like any resources that are here, they will then start to steal stuff and there's, there'll be things on here that we don't want them to get. And so that's gonna be really quite important. Um, so that's gonna be what they, they, they try to do. What else have we got through there? Got raid in through there. So we've got four ships at the moment, but there'll be more coming in. So I think what's happened is these have gone off and refueled here at this um, at this um, independent world, which we will take over at some point. We we don't have any eyes in here, so we can't see exactly what's going on. But they've refueled there and then come back from from attacking here, bounced into here, refueled, and have now come back in to target this world. And so we can expect to sort of see different things. And it's, it's decided to attack this world because it's unprotected. Now, we do actually have different fleets. And you can see there, this, this third defense fleet is still building up one of the other ships. The other consideration we have is that some of our ships, even though we can see the fuel, if we go and click on one of these, the, uh, this one's only just been constructed and its shielding still hasn't come up yet. So it's, it's actually not in a position to really go into a fight. So the third defense fleet is um, is not in a good position. The fourth defense fleet has been out for a little while, and it's the the last ship shielding is uh, is just in through here, and it's already got got because it's on automation. It's actually now got a, a job. It's going to come in and attack the destiny of Velabri. If you just go back into the fourth, yeah. So the whole fourth fleet is uh, targeting that ship. So it's leaving its area. So it's been built up, and it's going to be attacking. One of these ships, which one is it? Destiny, yeah, so that's the closest ship to it. And so this one here is a, um, is a fleet frigate. So this is a big ship. Um, and um, so this one here, this particular, this will be an interesting fight to see what actually happens in through here. So this one here, we've got like the, um, this one's got two bubble shields uh, on board, two heavy armors, uh, Lance missiles, so long range missiles. Uh, it's, a, it's a much, much bigger ship in through here as well. Iron shields, which means the iron cannons won't be as effective against this um, particular ship. It's got all sorts of special reactors. Um, only requires one reactor on this one because the output 
we can see down through there its output is enough to cater both for its its weapons and also for its hyperdrive. So uh, so this one is um, is ready to go. It's got an assault pod as well, which it's going to use for raiding. Uh, so that's that's what it's targeting. Let's just go and uh, watch what happens with that one. Have a look at the other fleets. So the first fleet is still trying to retrofit, uh, and it is in the process. So I'm going to leave that one doing what it's doing. The second is also going off to attack the destiny of Velabri. The uh, third has got no mission. Um, it's over here. What's this one like? Yeah, that one's also... That one, they're okay. It's just these. This one's okay. That one's going off to attack one of the ships anyway. But just the third itself is not... Doesn't, it hasn't given itself the mission. Let's just watch what actually happens with the uh, fleets. So we'll just unpause. Wait for things to... Here comes even more of the pirate ships. Here comes the two different fleets that we saw. Let's now just go really slow. Let's go down to, down to say quarter speed and just watch what actually happens in here. So we've now got like a, a full-blown pirate uh, fleet coming in to attack this particular uh, location. So now we need to start protecting against them. So our ships will then start to come in. Now what's this ship? This is the Fearless Vendetta. This is a feudal escort. This is one of the uh, one of the barons on one of the worlds. So it's actually, this is one of his private um, escorts, which we, we've got no control over. I can't do anything with that one through there. These ships here I do have control over. And so they've bounced in into this system. We'll just watch what actually happens. More of them are sort of coming in from the hyperspace. So they've used their hyperspace to, uh, to come in close. They're outside the range. This one has got its Lance missiles should start to fire fairly soon so we get more and more see the cohesion now of the actual fleets uh, this is another thing i might do there's no one that we're far that we're going to be fighting against that uses area of effect attacks and what we need to do is compress our attack to be as as meaningful as possible and so this is the fleet range this is the range of the actual weaponry that we actually have if we go into our um the second fleet in through here and so it's missing one of its ships but if we go and change the tactics, instead of it being a normal formation, now if, we're, if I was playing against the Tekans or something that uses area of effect attack, I wouldn't change this, but I can make it tight or very tight. I'll just make it tight, which makes the cohesion even tighter. This one was the fourth, I think. Yeah, we've got the fourth. I'm just gonna set them to also just have their formation set to, um, I'll just set it to tight, which just means that, they, that they're gonna be more comp compacted, which means that they get more firepower operating together. Um, so we'll just keep on going through. So uh, Cyril is saying maybe now blasters have turned down a bit. In the past they were uh, straight up uh, better than all other weapons. and it, it wasn't even close. Again it's sort of, um, actually you've mentioned this something before, if you had to try out the recent update, maybe the game is more polished now, but those uh, things absolutely um, do make people not respect the game enough. Um, is that something else? Transplant pro um, Oh, you can transform private cash into state cash by repeatedly cancelling private ships in construction. That will also give you back resources. I do that for resource. I didn't know that you... I thought the cash then... I thought the cash was back. Like I, I, I didn't think that you got to keep the cash in that instance. So here comes the... I'll just speed this up just so we can sort of close the gap. Now, one thing we may find is... Is that another feudal as well? No, this is a third... The third have, have, have decided to come into the fight as well. They're taking on this little and uh, this heavy escort. And so we're going to see a few different sorts of ships. Maybe I will just keep this one going in. We're now in range of the different ships. So if we can see that this one here, this heavy escort, for example, has got a Maxos blaster. So it's using a blaster um, along with a point defense system. And they're about the same distance, 950 and one uh, like a, and a and a thousand, and so that's the blaster goes out to here. That one there will be the assault pods. If we have a look at the assault pods, um, yeah, boarding range a thousand. So that's the assault pods for those ships. In this case, this is one of our frigates. This is the range for the missiles. That's the assault pod range. And then we've got the uh, iron weapon range in through there and then the point defense range in through that side as well. And this is one of our little e escorts as well. And this is just coming inside the, um, this one's got 50% shielding. 
so it's not going to stay in the fight for very long. And this one is using Thuon beams. And so the Thuon beam is also just on the uh, on the outskirts of what's happening through here. Now I'll just I'll just follow this one in a little bit because um, what's happening through here is the third the third is brought through. It's still got one ship being constructed. It's bringing in all five ships. They'll bounce in fairly soon. And um, and so as we sort of look at what's actually happening through here, this one will have fired initially when it came in because it was in inside the range. So it fired from the front of the ship, and these are now going to be targeting this ship. And so if I unpause that, it's come through. There goes the Thuon beams. So both Thuon beams are now firing from the front of the ship. Remember, these can only fire in a 180 degree arc. So if that ship was behind it, it wouldn't work. It looked like it missed. If we go and have a look at the actual ship itself, hardly, no, well, there's not been no damage there at all. So both of those missed. There goes a pallet uh, heading out. Now it's actually using the Maxos blasters. So it's actually was, this was the first ship within range. It looks like it's gonna miss as well. It did miss. So there should be four torpedoes in total going in. Let me see three. It's, um, we're also, there's also now point defense. This yellow that we're seeing there is point defense weaponry um, being, a, being used. I'm not sure from which ship, but that will be to try to intercept the, uh, the different bits and pieces going in. There goes the torpedoes. And we had one hit. So one, one missed in through there. The second one actually did hit. If we have a bit of a look, we can see there that this one actually did bounce into the, um, into the shielding a little bit. So we done, did minor damage to this shield with the torpedo. So we'll just have a bit more of a look. There goes the Maxos blaster. In this case, it did hit us. And so it's also now reduced our shielding. You can see our shielding is 175 as opposed to theirs, which is 319. And this is just a heavy escort. So a smaller ship than our frigates. It's certainly, this is why we need to have multiple ships coming in to attack these sorts of pirate ships initially. Now, just waiting for the uh, cooldowns. If we have a look at the cooldowns in through here, Thuon beam fires, uh, so firing rate is every 7.5 seconds. So that's a bit faster than the other one. Now remember, we've got this one here at 180, we've got an iron beam. Now there's the Maxos blasters, uh, uh, sorry, the, um, uh, what was, which one was it? The, um, oh, God, hang on, I clicked on the wrong thing. Yeah, it's Thuon beams. So it's the Thuon beams going in, they both hit now the Thuon beams are going to be more effective against their shielding. Their shielding's now down to 282, but nothing getting through just yet. And then, then these torpedoes will then fire again. Maxos blasters are being hit. So we've now, this is where our shields have got a one in 20 chance that we're going to, sorry, one in five chance that they're not going to protect this ship. And that's what's happened here. That's why the armor has now taken some damage on our ship. And so, just with those little blaster shots, they're, it's a much more effective because our shields are so much worse than, than theirs. Here, here we go, we're getting fired up, ready to uh, just line her up again. Now that's just a sentinel beam, um, this a point defense beam. If it's got nothing to fire at, if there's no small craft to fire at, it will then fire at the enemy ship. And so again, where all we're doing is damage. We've done a little, something's gone through the, the, like the one in 20 chance to get through the bubble shields has worked a little bit in here. Here comes the torpedoes again. So firing from the front. Again, we're playing it in slow-mo just to watch what actually happens. And they're all, they've all hit, but these torpedoes are less effective. So you can see there, they've now repaired the, um, what they've actually got there. They've repaired the armor, but the shielding is now coming down and it's now going to be jumping away. It's trying to escape because it's, it's realizing it's going to be a little bit too difficult. In the meantime, this guy here is, um, is now attacking the Nexus of Ferrarii, which will be this one here. So we've got this ship has taken a bit of damage, but we've now got full fleets coming in within range of this ship. And so this ship will start to, it's got heaps and heaps of, of, um, of shielding. And again, only one in five will actually get through. This here is the third defense, also just going after individual ships. Um, yes, yeah, so we're just trying to keep the the, um, the raiding away from the uh, from this location. 
that there is um, is also the third. They've actually split right up, which is, I mean, that's just what it's doing. But it's um, that's not usually a good idea. In, in our case, we're going after this fr this frigate. Now, what we want to do is we we really want to be disabling the ship. So what we need to do on the ship is, well, first of all, to reduce its shielding right down. Let's just see what happens with these torpedoes. So it's using point defense against the torpedoes. Did very minimal damage with those torpedoes. This is why the torpedoes just aren't going to cut it. That's why you do need to have a bit of a mix. See the point defense weaponry is um, is hitting the, it's actually hitting these, these torpedoes uh, over time. And it reduces, the, we can't see it in the game, but it reduces the power of the torpedo. Even when it hits, it just means it hits at a much lower rate. There goes one of its lance missiles, and it's got a volley. If you have a look at the, that's a missile system coming out of this ship. And so the actual ship itself, the lance missiles, we'll see it's got a shots per volley is two. And so the uh, lance missile is coming from the front of the ship. So it's got a lance missile at the front. And so that's what we're seeing here, I think. There's the second one there. It's now hit us. Again, one in five are breaking through into the into the um, armor. So it's still still firing. Just watch what actually happens. Slow-mo, here comes more torpedoes. Again, the torpedoes aren't going to be the things that are going to do the big damage here. But eventually, if we've got enough ships... Now, that is an iron cannon. The iron cannon at the back here fired across and actually hit the ship. But if I hover over this one, you can see there that now that iron cannon has now disabled a couple of things. It's disabled one of its engines, and it's disabled two of its weapons. So two weapons are now disabled. If we go and have a look inside the ship, the iron, this is why the iron cannons can be so useful. Um, so we can see there that one of the accelerator engines is down, but it's going to come back up in practically no time at all. Uh, Maxos blaster is down as well. That's going to be back up in one second. The lance missiles are down also just for a very, very short period. But if we can get more and more of those iron cannon shots onto the enemy ship, uh, we're going to be able to do and bring these down much, much more effectively. So the other ships will then turn around, trying to get the iron cannon shots in. There's a um, there's a missile that it's being targeted before it can accelerate off. You can see we we are reducing its uh, abilities. There goes another iron cannon that missed. Look, the torpedoes that are missing. <laughs> it's not very accurate. Now, hyperdrive is offline. We just hit it again. So we can see there that this is what we want. Um, we can't send assault pods across until the shields are down. Uh, so at, at this stage, we can't actually try to, to capture the ship. But if we can keep it going the way that we are, it can no longer escape. So what's happened there, if we have a bit, bit of a look inside, they've brought everything else back online but the Jarek's hyperdrive is down now for three seconds if it was trying to jump that would then mean it would have to recycle through the jump cycle again but this is now going to be just down for three seconds which means that it's it's sort of a it becomes a sitting duck um, at this stage and so if we just keep on firing we've got its shields down to half of what it was because of the um, the number of ships coming in to attack it just watch for more of the blue this one here will then be able to fire its uh, iron cannon as well fairly soon. So it's now got its um, its hyperdrive is now back online again. And um, yeah, was, well, the shielding is coming down. It's still still got an attack. Uh, like it's it's a operation is still to attack us, which is fine. Here we go. Here we go. We've almost got the shielding down. It should start to try to jump and run. But we need to have as much firepower in here as we possibly can. Once the shielding is down, what we're going to then find is that our torpedoes will then be very, very effective against this ship because uh, they're going to be then breaking through into the um, inside. Now, you can see nothing is damaged there at all at this stage. If I just hover over the... Um, over this aspect, you can see that everything is on normal. 
nothing is disabled. But as soon as those shields go down, there's only 19 more points, uh, we're going to see some dramatic changes on this ship. And it was, should be starting to jump. Now it's down. Look at this. It went from zero, and now we're starting to see all sorts of things happening. The armor is coming down very, very effectively. The hull is coming down very effectively as well. We've now got starting to get damaged components, but nothing really in the in the um, in the inside of the ship yet. But this is going to drop really, really fast now. Um, it can still jump, so I'm thinking of doing a little bit more damage to it uh, before I send in the troops. So I'm just going to let things happen a little bit with these torpedoes. Torpedo is now going to be extremely effective. See how hyperdrive has now gone offline? Uh, we're now seeing a whole lot of different things. One of its defenses has been completely destroyed. But look at all the damage being done. This is because even though it's got armor up, the torpedoes have got that bleed through. If I go back to my ships again, just to explain what's going on here, the torpedoes about two thirds of the way down, it's got the shield bypass of negative 40, which means that they're weak against the shields, but the um, the armor bypass of plus 40 essentially means that there's a, um, that 40% of the damage that is done by these torpedoes, and you can see there at close range, it's 35 damage per shot, which is a, a substantial amount. <clears throat> now they, they don't have, like that's a, that's a lot of damage coming in per shot on this particular ship. And so in this case, the hyperdrive is now offline have a look and see what's actually in there. It just means that even though there's armor, this those torpedoes, 40% of the damage from those 35 points is going through onto the hull and onto the components. So the components inside now, the hyperdrive is being knocked out. It's at 99%, so their repair crews, the damage control unit, will start to fix that one up. Fuel, one of the fuel cells is down to 96%. Engines down to 98 97% back in through there. Lance missiles at 99. So, and the um, the actual sentinel beam, it can no longer protect itself. Uh, the heavy armor, we've got uh, one heavy armor down at 73%. The other armor has been destroyed completely, which is why it's sort of no longer operating. Um, the bubble shields are still operational, but they, um, so they keep on trying to fuel up, but we've, we've got now too much power coming in. Let's keep it going just a little bit longer with this weaponry. There goes a, it's a, a missed um, iron cannon shot. Now we're down to. Um, I just want to keep track tabs. They've only got they've got such limited stuff at the moment. I think what now what we'll do is um, there's hardly anything left in the normal column. There's one defence left, no weaponry. It's a sitting duck. So I'm going to go back to both the fleets, the second fleet and the fourth fleet. And now I'm just going to grab the whole fleet and give it an order. I'm just going to do a long right click. And I'm now going to tell it to capture this particular ship. It's now a sitting duck. So we now change the, 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 the rules of engagement with this. I'm just going to go to capture. So that's now um, been set up. We've still got little fights going on all over the place over through here, which we should actually have a bit of a look at. But what will now happen is, because there's no shielding here, all of these ships will start to send, and I'll just go back to say an eighth speed. There's the, um, that's, these are all of the um, Marines now leaving our ships to go and take over this, this, uh, this big pirate ship. So in they go. There'll be more and more coming in. And so when we have a look at this one now, we can now see that there's actually ship, there's, um, there's uh, we've now got three different groups on there at this stage. There'll be more coming. So we'll d double that one up. And then that will be enough for us to take this ship. So we'll stop firing at the ship after this as well. So these will, these shots will still go through. These guys will then start running through the ship and start to disable. You can see there there's already weapons disabled. There's general slots disabled. They'll just go through and disable everything while they try to take the ship over. There goes more coming in. So we've now got even more. All right, so we've got 461. We no longer really need to worry about that one anymore, so let's now go after another another target. So what have we got? We've just got little escorts. They're still strong, but they're um, escorts, escorts, and this one here is uh, is also now in trouble, and um, our, our guy is jumping away as well. It's escaping because it's now taken too much damage, um, but this one is also now in a bit of a problem. If we have a look and see what it's got. So um, we did manage to disable it with the iron cannons, but 
there's not much damage there. 73. What I might do is I might split my forces up. This was their biggest ship that we had to contend with in this particular battle. Let's go and grab the second now because we've now got the, um, the other guys are, are going off to do what they, they're going to do. Let's go and attack this one and destroy that one. That's with the second. The fourth? It doesn't really matter where we go. Um, nothing, there's nothing close. So look, I'll, um, I'll attack this ship. Okay, the third is still spread out. Um, there's a freighter trying to escape this particular one. So the raids haven't gone in yet, but they will fairly soon. So the, um, the remaining pirate ships will raid. This one's probably trying to escape, I would guess. Yep, so uh, actually, no, it's, it's on the attack. So it's actually still going fairly strongly. We have a bit of a look at this one. I'll just go back up to um, quarter speed again. I do like this in slow-mo. I don't know why people play these battles so fast because there's so much that goes on uh, with, the, with, with the different ships. This one is that feudal ship. <laughs> it's doing pretty well. It's um, taken damage to its armor, but its, uh, its shielding is actually not terrible. So that's, what, that's the one that we have no control over. Uh, back over through here, we've got a missile frigate, which is um, in, a tr in trouble against this escort. This escort has hardly taken any damage. This is why we, we don't really want to have... Um, I'm just going to let the third just do their own thing for a little while. No one stopped. It's just, yeah, it's just uh, slugging it out with the others. I was trying to jump careful that they don't uh, damage this one yep so now now what's happened is this pirate ship has been able to raid and send it send a pirate uh, team down onto the planet so it's now under attack or it's not not happening just yet destruction new escort completed that's okay you should see them coming in fairly soon is under feudal control as well a heavy escort yep so a ground battle is now raging so that what they happen there is that they they've sent their assault pods in to attack the moon and so the um and what happens in here even though we've got like a lot more support on the actual planet like we've got a lot of like our um We've got militia forces as well as our actual conqueror forces, and so these have these these will push them away. But if they're if they're there for any length of time, they will steal resources and or money from the location. So they they're just trying to do that at this stage. Um, these guys are now we can ignore this one now because this one is basically um, you can see there we've got nearly two to one at, um, uh, troops on that one. And if we have a look, it's, it's disabled now, completely disabled. If we have a look inside it, as the guys go through, they're just going to be disabling all sorts of things through the ship as they move. So we don't need to worry about those anymore. So we've got more attacks coming in this way. That will then also send another pirate group down onto the surface. We're trying to jump away. The other one jumped away from there. It jumped away from here now as well. But then these other fleets are now splitting up to go off into uh, get some of these smaller ships. This one is still operational. And we've got more attacks coming in. This is, a, this is a, another feudal ship coming in against this ship, which hasn't taken any damage. Now they're just getting ready to jump. Maybe they're not. Yeah, it's probably close enough for them to um, to just use impulse power. It's probably our most interesting one. And in this case, this one's now trying to escape. But we're not going to have enough firepower here. This is why we need to have meaningful fleets. Yeah, we're getting limited shots on the actual ship itself. It's had some damage. Actually, its shields have just dropped. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You need to disable the um, the reactors or the um, hyperdrive. This one's not close enough to be able to do it, though, with its iron cannons. Actually, the iron cannons are within range, but they won't be able to have the field of fire. The um, So it's got to be 
attacking it from behind, and it's um, it will be trying to do it. It's going to have to just do it with conventional weapons, like that. But nothing's really breaking through here. It's still got armor. It's gone. So it's escaped. The other ones will now sort of go back and try to figure out. Like this one's still in the process of doing its raid. Uh, this one here is um, actually still has its assault pod on board. So it's a, it didn't fire at the at the sh at the uh, planet. The, this um, these are being pushed back at this point in time. So they're down to 27. They, it may they they may be there long enough to do what they have to do. But we'll see what actually happens. But a new admiral has appeared at Fliarii. That's good. I'll just speed it up a little bit to say half speed because there's nothing like it's full speed now. Okay, so um, raiders withdraw. So they did steal some credits from the uh, from that raid. So even though they get pushed back, now the, the more forces we have on these planets, the better. Oh, hang on, here we go. The destiny of Velabri boarded and captured. So we've now captured that big ship. So. Um, if we have a look at this one, this is a fleet frigate. This is a we don't have a fleet frigate design for ourselves, and so if we have a look at this, this ship now, so we now control this one, which I can either use as another combat ship if I wanted to, or I can pull it apart for technology, which is sort of what we want to do. Uh, but we're not ready. We're going to have to repair it. Um, <coughs> we can have a bit of a look to see what it's what's actually happened with it. Actually, all of this internals are working. It's just some of the some of the externals aren't. So I'm going to tell it to go back and um, uh, and go back to the home world, and we'll pull it apart at the home world itself. So uh, I'm just going to go and right click on this one and just go back to um, retire at Fiarii 2. And this will then take a long process. It'll chew up all of the construction. Do you want to do it out here? Maybe not. Might be best to do this at one of the other other worlds that aren't really being used for. For building things. Yeah, this one here is, is only just building it like a mining ship. This one here doesn't actually have a spaceport. That would be ideal for what we're doing. Let's just go back and um, just go and grab that ship. So we'll we'll just pull that one apart in here. It can take a long time to uh, pull apart the ships. So it'll go back off, and that's that's what we want with those. Now we're not going to get close enough to be able to do anything in here. They should be jumping now. now it's going back into try to raid. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you're sort of trying to figure out what's going on in the game, um, that was an interesting little uh, attack in there. In this case, we're now just playing at normal speed. So the third is now sort of trying to do things. We just tried to disable that ship. It's trying to jump away now. Here comes the other fleets, and it's got it. It's gotten away. There's still this ship over here, which is repaired. It's no hyperdrive is still offline. Okay, in this case, this one's still actually operational. Hyperdrive is at 88 percent. It can't jump. In that case, what we'll do is we'll we'll capture this one as well because it's got nowhere to go. So if I go to, back to the third again, the third is now operational. I'm going to tell it to go and capture this ship. So capture the Predator. And so it, it will just jump across. Um, I've got the fourth as well. Back down this other side, we've got the uh, second as well. So I'll just tell all of them to go and capture it. There's no more troops left over on this one, but if I just give it a capture order... Actually, no, it's not going to do it without that. Uh, and it's got attack, an attack order there at the moment. What else was there? Mino Prowlers. Okay, we'll um, attack this one here. This is a different one. Just need to give them different orders. It's going into try to raid this particular world. I do actually have a spaceport, but it's not it's not big enough to be able to protect the world itself. So, uh, and then the fourth is attacking the looming destiny. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, that keeps the um, 
Now the first is still, is actually also now, have they been up retrofitted? Yeah, these are now the new designs. So the first is also going off to attack the Raging Cataclysm, which is, not sure where that one actually is. So they've spread out a fair bit. I might send the first down to Windus because um, we are going to need to have protection here at this at this world. Maybe I. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and change this one to um, set the home base for the first fleet at Rabii, and um, it's already on a automatic defend roll, which means it will now defend this system. So we'll leave that there for the first. So it's actually automatically doing its thing. The other three fleets in here that we've been using for attacks, we'll just keep it going. And it's off, off its way, on its way to, to move into other locations. So it's now jumping to the other ship. Third is moving around again. So they've got attacks going in. Hyperdrive offline for this guy. This is the second. And we now have everything we need. So let's just go and capture this one. So it takes a fair bit of time to bring everything else back on. Let's just, um, there's nothing else there. We'll just leave that one where that is. That's the one we just were looking at. So we'll just get rid of that one. This one here, show me. That's the same one. Yeah, so the second is, um, second we'll just do the capture of this one. Again, the more of these we can capture, the better. Um, where was the other attack? That's good. We've got a lot of uh, lot of steel mines back in through there. This one's going in for re like to retire there, so it's now back in, in the position just to do what it's doing. It's under feudal control. First fleet, second fleet capture. Yep, that's okay. Third fleet capturing as well. Fourth fleet attacking. Looming destiny. So it's another ship that's just come in. Yeah, so they've got they've got our our guys are starting to get on board here. There goes more. Yep, so we've now got more people on board. This is going to we should be able to capture that one as well now. Pirates have got like a, a technological superiority over us. This is the fourth. Now that's ready essentially to be captured as well. So I'll just go back to the fourth and just tell them to capture this. There we go. And we'll now just um, maintain those. I'll just monitor what's going on. So all three fleets are in the process of capturing. Our, our uh, troops are much, much better than the Cormino troops. Um, so uh, Petro is saying, is it Excel or Vanilla? This is not, I'm not using the, the Excel mod. I, I, I really want to tr play it, but um, the, the trouble I have is that I, I show so much of the game that I need, to I need to show pretty much the vanilla way that the game plays. And Excel, even though it looks incredible, um, it's, uh, it's, the game is still too new with too many changes for me to actually 
flick all the way across to that just yet. If the game was mature, like as in, you know, it was hardly any changes happening to it, then that's when I'd start to look at those big mods like that. But that's an incredible mod by all accounts. I'm sorry I've missed so many of the comments here, guys. I've been just glancing across to see if there's anything, um, uh, to see what's going on. Um, there's a few things about bugs and stuff. But just write Daz Tactic if you want to grab my attention. I, I, otherwise, I do miss things a little bit. Uh, Iron Cannon to the front. Yeah, it, look, it's it, at the expense, though, of something else. And so I need to get the firepower at the front as well. So it's one of these things where um, we've done we've done well enough. So I'm, I'm, I won't change where the Iron Cannons actually are. Uh, yeah, the Iron Cannons deserve 360 slots. They do, but we don't have them in the Mortland ships. I should point out that as well. Every... Every faction has got like a, a completely different loadout with their ships. Um, I might talk a bit about that actually, because that's so. This is one of the things that is so interesting with the actual, like designing your own ships. Uh, so that's now been captured. So if we have a look at this one through here, uh, I'm just going to go and um, got retrofit. We don't want to do any retrofits. We want to, and we don't want to repair. We don't want to scuttle it. I'll just tell it to go and um, retire there. I'll just set up a bit of a queue for uh, retiring these ships. Yep, so just retiring at that, at that spaceport. And what they will then do is, as we start to pull these things apart, we'll start to see things like we're actually picking up a little bit of information about shielding, for example, a little bit of information about the fission reactors, the engines, we're, we're just getting a bit of a boost as we start to pull these ships apart. Hybrid thrusters. Um, <clears throat> there probably won't be much else down this way, I wouldn't think. Maybe maybe with the frigates or something. Look at our hyperdrive technology. I wonder if we can... Um, I'm going to actually crash this program. I'm going to pay the money. That's, that way we're going to get it done fast. And I think what I'll do, even though I'm sort of running out of steel and stuff, I'm going to go and grab, grab planetary governance. Yeah, so we can just get it queued up just to be the next one that does come in. We do want that one. Uh, some of the weaponry may sort of start to come up as well. Yeah, a little bit of there in the um, in the electromagnetic defences with the iron shields. We don't have that yet ourselves. So that, no, that's all working out fairly well. I'm happy with the uh, with what we're doing there. All right, okay. So we'll just keep these coming in. But yeah, all, each ship like ours mainly face the front. The Boscarans are aggressive. They mainly face the front. The humans are sort of a bit more evenly spread. Um, until we get the bigger ships, we're not going to get 360-degree slots. But if I do, um, if I just save the game, uh, save game to here, and um, if I exit the main menu as an example, I'll sort of show you the differences uh, with some of the other factions if we start a new game. And I'll just leave the settings of sort of the way that they are with this. If you play as, for example, the Tekans, they're a very, very interesting uh, faction with their with their ships. So RGB is saying, uh, what's exactly is new in this update? It's um, if you play with the open beta, it's we've been playing with this version for a couple of weeks. But um, if you're not if you're not in the open beta on Steam or wherever you know wherever you got the game from, um, then the big changes with every government type has been tweaked and made a lot more meaningful. Um, the humans and the mortalans have been completely reworked uh, in this particular update. Uh, there's borders now that show, there's measurement tools, there's, um, there's measurement displays as to once you, you're in the middle, middle game with the fleets. I should show that actually with like loading an, an old game and show some of this stuff. This is taking a bit of time. I won't spend too much time with this. Maybe I'll, I'll load in one of the existing games that I've got just so you can sort of see the, um, 
see, I'll just get, do a bit of a snapshot again as to the, some of the things that have actually changed in this particular update. There's been a, like all the tool tips have been really, really fleshed out really, really well, except for fleet um, templates. <laughs> I'll, um, yeah, that's one thing. So if I just go back across, just let's just get started. Um, you can see some things in through here. I'll just dismiss that one. I'll dismiss this one as well. And dismiss that as well. So um, so in this in this instance, playing this one here, you can see the border treatments have now, when you've got very similarly colored borders, that no longer is a problem. Uh, the um, yeah, so that's one of the things. We don't actually have any fleets in this instance, so I won't show the fleets in this in, it, because it's, it's the start of the game. But if I go into my ship designs, like under ship constructions, and have, a, for example, the biggest ship I've got that I can actually look at is the frigate, that if we uh, go and edit the frigate in this instance, one of the, one of the weird things with the uh, Tekken ships is that, the, um, is that they're... Um, is this one going to show us? Yeah, this is, this is typical of a Tekken ship. The engines are at the back, so if we have a look at the, if we highlight where the engines actually are, that's the back of the ship. But look at the main weapon mount. The weapon mount also fires backwards, which is unusual. So it's actually got sort of like a weird, weird range. There's nothing on this ship that fires directly at the front. So that's just a very unusual Tekken-ish sort of style approach. So they've got these weapon mounts on either side of the ship. Uh, but they don't directly fire. Actually, no, they do, sorry. These have got a 225 degree. So they do technically fire to the front as well. So they can fire to the front. These are just, they're not 180 degrees. So I thought they were 180. But um, this one, these ones, um, but they still don't have a 360 degree f uh, field of fire all the way around. The Tekans do actually have a special weapon, which the, the AI doesn't use all that all that well. It's got the, actually, there, there we go. The Iron Shield Projector, this one actually is using... Um, this is actually a, an area of effect type attack, or it's, this is like an, a um, disabling weapon. This is what the Tekans do. They disable and disable enemy ships. That's really what their, um, their whole purpose is being. So, again, they play very, very differently to some of the other factions. i just cancel that one and get rid of that one. Just press Escape and just go back out again to the main menu. Just load in one that... Um, if I continue, if I load in a game, um, yeah, Gizarians, I played them for a little while. This is uh, Mortalins again. Maybe that one there, if I, if I open this one up, this is a, a bit old now, this is a, um, like a couple of months old. So this is, um, I start, I'd like to start every time there's like a fairly major update and this one was this was at the start of the Mortland stuff I think um, that was coming into the game I'll just load her in hopefully it'll be stable enough to uh, to show some of the other things that have now changed with the uh, with the game yes this is a very very uh, like you know this is a mid-game game essentially with what's going on uh, by the way if the if the game becomes too confusing with ev with everything you can actually turn stuff off so you can actually go to actually which one which area is it is it the game menu and settings you can go to the settings and um, say hey I'm sick of I'm sick of seeing uh, the uh, which one do we want to see the civilian ships just go and apply it there it goes cleans up the uh, cleans up the game if you if you're not interested in seeing where all the civilian ships are I mean I like having it on. But in this sort of instance, we can see things a bit more clearly. So in the in previously, I mean, the, there's no colours here that are dramatically different. But the, the borders have a, a big change just in terms of the um, user interface, user experience type thing. That's actually really quite nice, the way that actually now works. Um, in this particular game, there's no factions that are very, very similar with what they do. But it's it's really, really quite... It's, they've done very, very well with what actually does go on through here. The other thing we have is if we go back, you know, I've got a, like a lot of different fleets. So we now actually have, if I go and show all fleets, it will now show essentially all of my AI controlled fleets with their ranges of what they're likely to be wanting to do. Uh, we haven't had this before as well. So we can see the ranges of the fleets. If I just go and press the first fleet, this is one of my big attack fleets. Um, still being constructed. Looks like it's maybe some damage in there as well. Uh, this is one set to manual. If I set this one as an attack fleet, that one will then have, and if I set it the, um, 
the range to be something a bit more meaningful, like say for example 150M. There we go. So around that system there is where this one is would then sort of look for attack targets. But we could set this one up to something really quite substantial, like 300M. So it's now going to attack anything, any target it can find, any viable target in there will become something that it can then go and do. That may be a bit, a bit too extreme. <laughs> but you know, you get the idea. Uh, you've got the different coloured stuff. So things like this, there's so many little tools now in the game that really make it stand out. It's uh, very, very cool the way it sort of does work. Um, so if uh, are we playing as human? No, we're playing as the Mortlands. In this case, I'll have different design ships as well. Like if we have a look at the, um, and our technology will be a lot further up. In fact, you can see there that we've got like a war against a few different factions. <coughs> our war weariness is starting to kick in a little bit. Um, is what we're researching. We've got uh, different sorts of uh, obligations. This is patriotic wave and feudal obligation, which is now new to the um, to the game. Uh, this is because we're playing as the Mortlands. Again, just to quickly recap, if we go to the Galactopedia, go to the alien races and look at Mortlands. Uh, we have now special abilities. Like we have, we had the patriotic wave in through here, uh, where we've got, in this case, 20% population growth and um, the colony corruption reduction of, of plus 10%. And so the patriotic wave is when war is declared on you, obtain a two-year boost to mortal and population growth, along with your choice of either colony corruption reduction or war weariness reduction. So we didn't have a problem with war weariness. So in that case, I had chosen the um, the other one. So yeah, this was when it, when this was being beta tested actually. Uh, so that's actually what happened with that with the mortlands. And this one over through here is feudal obligation. And so um, around two three until until there, we've got. Um, Where's feudal obligation? I'm not sure if that's kicking in there. Oh, that's sorry. That's that that, that that's an aspect of the Mortalans. If we then go back to governments, every government type has now been has now been tweaked. And so, if we have a look at uh, we feudal, I think we have feudalism in here as well. And so, if we have a look at feudalism, we now actually have feudal obligation. So, double troop movement uh, recruitment rate for two years after a war starts. And so, we actually have extra uh, like our troop recruitment rate. Is plus 100 percent at the moment because someone declared war one of these it must be um must be this one here i'm guessing the um the ikaru uh, may have declared war against us nothing has happened with them but that that what that does is it, tr it triggers these things one from because we're mortalans and one because we're feudal a feudal government so it's quite interesting the way it does play out um and then we're just sort of, you know, doing our different bits and pieces in through there. So that sort of that gives a bit of a snapshot, I guess, as to um, as to what the game now has. It's, it's there's a lot more customization in the, in what actually happens with the game itself. So it's really really cool, really cool. Anyway, that's um, let's just go back out, exit to main menu, and we'll just load our game. So it, ours, our game is early stages at this stage. So we're still just trying to um, meet the uh, the pirate threat. And we do, I have ramped the pirate threat up a little bit. I don't think we've got anything else we need to be um, focused on. Yep, so this one's now been captured as well. Um, that's Arian. So let's just go and... Um, Retire this one at Arian. Again, all of these ships are going to help me with my uh, research. I don't need to worry about using these for my own ships. Uh, I don't need to supplement my armies or my navies with these at this stage. So the first is moving to uh, the Winter system now. The second, um, you build a constructor, yet we'll do that. The second, I'm just going to set this one to um, just defend. The, uh, so I'm just going to automate these now. The third also will just be set to defend. The fourth will also just be set to defend. And so they've got no mission at this stage. They'll just start to look after themselves. Now we do actually have the colony ship. I'll just move that one so we're not... It's just going to be selected fleets. That's just showing us what we're protecting with these different fleets. Now we've got the uh, colony ship. Is that it there? No, it's exploration ship. Go 
There we go. It's actually now colonizing this world. So I'll just I'll grab say the third fleet and set this one. When we take this world, we'll then make this one into a um, another another area for one of our fleets. And so they're just dropping the settlers on this particular world. Gamea five. There we go. Colony founded. Set home base. Now we're under attack, so we've actually got not not at this location. We'll just dismiss that one. We'll let, that, we'll let this one build up slowly. Um, exploration ship is under attack. Let's have a bit of a look and see where that actually is and what's attacking it. So this is another fleet. This is a destroyer, bigger again than anything we've seen so far, and that is um, in the Valabri system, which is sort of close to their base. So they've got a base out here. Where is it? Here. So that's the actual pirate base, the secret lair. Very, very powerful. So we need to go in with the multiple fleets if we're going to take this thing out. But initially, I'm just happy to grab the um, all the ships I can of theirs. Uh, Joe is saying, do you play games for victory? Very rarely. Very, very rarely. Um, in any game, to be honest. <laughs> Some games I do, but it's... Um, it, I tend to play until I sort of until I've achieved something that I'm happy with. In this case, um, it may be something as simple as destroying the pirate base. It, it, um, it, I'm, really, I'm really wanting to go and get the Loris fruit that was down this way somewhere. Like that's something I would love to, like, at, yeah, in the Yaga system. There's like a Loris fruit world, um, which is right here. This one does actually have the Loris fruit. So that's something that I, that I would love to, to grab that one. In fact, we can colonize that. So that would be an objective. But before we do that, we need to then get rid of the pirates. So we're still building the uh, different escorts and things that we're, uh, that we're doing. So we're now getting protection into the different, in, into the different areas. Oh, look, here, look at this, here we go. We've got another pirate fleet streaming in. And this is, I love this about the game as well. So we've got unknown ships. That, that we don't know anything at all about. So these are basically unknown ships coming back in. Um, actually, it's well, it's an unknown ship, but it's telling us what it is. <laughs> so we don't get to see it, but it's got the name of it, and we can see the, see the actual... In fact, there's a big ship there. Keep that one selected. So they're coming in. And what are they going to go after? So let's have a bit of a look and see. And so we've got ourselves, in this case, they're still in hyper, hyperspace. Uh, they're going up to, to Philly, uh, Filiari 3 uh, by the looks of things. Let's have a bit of a look and see. Yep, they are. And so the big ship that's come in, in this case, is a fleet destroyer. So we now have a bigger ship than what we've seen before. And I've now sent two of the fleets away, unfortunately. Um, this one here has got... Um, like it's st still actually this no this oh hang on this is different again, this is um this is actually a different group it doesn't have the bubble the bubble generators so if we have a look at it it's using concussion missiles, rail guns etc etc, so this one is moving this is actually one of our friends, so this group here is the Red Fang Raiders which are Mortland pirates and we're paying them money to not attack us so they're just wandering around now the Longest, the longer we leave attacking them, the more powerful they become. But ultimately, they can become friendly with us. But one thing it does do diplomatically for us, it can change our reputation. Uh, we get a reputation for destroying uh, pirate ships, but also some factions won't want to deal with us because of the uh, because we're dealing with pirates. In fact, it may show in here. Um, not so much at this stage. Yeah, it hasn't really worried them at this stage. But that that can impact our. Um, our diplomacy, but in this case, these are not a threat. It's only the Quamino pirates we have to worry about. New escort completed, so they've they've been going off and doing their own raids, which we have nothing to do about. And so they're moving back to their their home system. Like that's the uh, that's that fleet destroyer. You can see there, it's uh, now just doing its one its one move. It's had to bounce into our system to then be able to bounce across to its system. This is its jump range. So if it was coming from over here somewhere, it would have it it wouldn't have been able to get there in one jump. 
All right, that's fine. Now we'll just wait for the next uh, attack of the Quaminos. We've done well with our fleets, actually, with those Quaminos. Um, oops, excuse me. Build ships. Now, now th th this was... I was told that you can actually do something tricky with this. Um, instead of... With that, with that open, I was told that if you go up to this and then go to build order it filled this in but it doesn't okay well that doesn't work so I hate this I hate that this does this one if I go to build ships see yeah, if I go to build ships it just puts it in as an it doesn't do the order I don't think I um, really don't want to be building all this stuff. So I don't want to just say, yeah, go and build it. But I do want to be building more um, construction ships, as an example. But I can't afford them anyway. There's something something that's been done around this, but I, I haven't been able to get that to work. I haven't really tested that one at all. <clears throat> So for I saying it should uh, with a question mark. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like it's um, that's what I've been told. I've been told by other people saying, "Oh, just flick it open and uh, away you go." But it doesn't. It doesn't do it for me. Okay, so we've now got another another escort under attack by the Camino Prowlers. Let's see what we're up against. Yeah, we've got a few different uh, ships now coming back in again. So anything big? Yeah, we've got another fleet frigate coming in. We have, this is the uh, fourth defense fleet. Uh, we have the, um, just a heavy escort there. And then this is a feudal, a feudal control ship. It's also a feudal control ship. I'll leave them to do their stuff. This is another feudal control ship being built. The fourth. I can give it a capture order straight away, but it will then not go in full bore. And I really want it to attack this particular ship. speed. It's jumping away. Our ships are very slow. We need that one in 20 chance to break through the shielding. No, it's gone. Okay, so I'll just tell it to come and capture this ship. So then we'll back to defense. That way it'll just be automated for the other other fleets. Advisor suggestion shows up. Um, okay, click on the yellow decal at the uh, side and bring up the uh, ship build menu already filled out. The yellow decal. Okay, I'll have to try to try that one. Hopefully, we we'll get another one of those fairly soon. Okay, that's great. Actually, well, we don't have enough resources anyway to do it. coming in to try to capture this. Oh, the icon, not Declan, okay. Yeah, hopefully we get another one soon. Probably still need help, <laughs> I would guess. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty bad at understanding instructions. It's trying to jump. 
There goes the um, the crew. Yeah, because your hyperdrive is now offline. That's good. They're still attacking it. They should leave it alone now that we've got uh, troops on board. They're not, are they? <laughs> They're going to destroy it. Everyone off, everyone off the ship. <laughs> Down to one percent. There we go. <laughs> now there is loot to be picked up in through here as well, and uh, some of our marines as well, I would guess. Um, anyway, that's um, something will come along and pick that up. Super capacitor. Yep, there we go. There's um, they're picking up hull sections and things. This is um, the second defense. This is good stuff. So they're picking up the uh, the loot that is important. Uh, this one is going back to uh, moving back to the spaceport. Uh, this is the fourth, which is now set to automation. So it's just going to go back to its home base. Now, what the hell is that? The Grim Fire Lance, which is one of the Red Fang Raiders, which is one of our friends. I hope at some point that they actually redo the different sorts of fleets for the pirates. That would be pretty cool. These are um, just feudal uh, feudal escorts coming back. Yep, so they're just feudal ships. Um, okay. Oh, here we go. We've got a destroyer. Pause. Show me. All right. So we've got a. Um, got an escort in there trying to escape from our ships this is the first fleet now the destroyer is a much much bigger prospect that we've seen than we've seen before so this one has got still got two bubble shields three lots of lance missiles now that's not such a big problem for us if we can get this ship that would be awesome so it's firing its missiles at the mining station uh, these guys here are just going to come in. Now, I probably want to destroy this one. Let's just do the attack and then we'll um, we'll just continue on past it. Now, the first. Set this one at least to tight as well. Trying to jump. Hyper drivers offline. It's not going anywhere anymore. A few destroyed sections. So if we have a bit of a look, the Jerex hyperdrive has been destroyed. So they can't they can't leave. So they then they can't be repaired. So in this case, we'll still be doing damage, but let's now go and attack this ship and try to bring its shielding down if we can. We're going to keep on firing it just as we go past it. That will then destroy this ship. Yep, it's gone. The mining station has got its own uh, missiles or torpedoes. Okay, so actually I'll just read this one. So Joshua Salmons is saying, I'm thinking about breaking the flag mod into two. One just for players, uh, doesn't need to e edit the XLMs, and then a sub mod to get the AI empires to use them. Um, oh, hang on, here we go. Sorry, I'll just go back up a bit. Joshua is then saying, hey, um, big fan, I'm the uh, refreshed... Oh, cool. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was you. <laughs> so uh, we're using a couple, two of your mods, and one mod has been turned off, uh, which is the flag mod. So it's saying, um, I saw the start of the stream, you had a question about flag mods. Uh, should be good to use uh, with new game version. Yeah, it's um, when I, because I get stuff early, uh, was when I first started playing, it was the first day, I think, of the, um, of the open beta uh, with the thing. And so 
I had I was running all of I, I love the mods and uh, and and I, I love the flag mod, but it it then broke the um, uh, it broke the, the like essentially the the groups that, that it was playing against. I actually would like them. I like you saw you down saying that you would think about breaking it into one for uh, just players and one for the um, for the AI. That'd be cool, but I still I like seeing it everywhere. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I quite I really quite like the the look of it, but it was just. Um, so it should be okay now. That's good to know, actually. Yeah, well done, by the way. Really, really love those mods. Um, love the uh, the the resource mod as well. Like that uh, for me is uh, abs almost a must-have uh, with the game because there's so many different resources. Uh, so Joshua then saying, "Yeah, I was just waiting to, for the for the beta to hit main branch before updating the mod. Had to choose between people in the main branch versus the beta enjoys. Yeah, yeah, that must be difficult. Actually, that would be difficult. So." Um, but yeah, I'm guessing now that it's there. So um, uh, she just saying, do not. But I was trying to reduce the number of re repeat flags in our games. Yeah, it's um, no, it's uh, excellent work. Excellent, absolutely excellent. I, I love because um, I, I I was like with that resource mod. It, I did a similar thing with Distant Worlds One with with the mods that I had done, but I didn't take it anywhere near as far with the color coding that you did. I did I did very basic color coding. I love it what you've done, where you actually have split the color coding up into the um, so what Josh has done, just to explain this, in the actual resources, if we have a look, and I don't know if it's, it's, if it's in the Galactopedia, but if we have a look at, at the actual resources themselves, does it show up? Um, yeah, it does. So what what's happened here is Joshua has actually put in a color code in behind each actual resource. So rather than just, I, when I had done my mod, all I did was split the fuel into in, with one color the the super super resources into another color which was gold the um uh the luxuries and then the and the production that's all i sort of had done what uh what josh has done which makes a lot more sense is he's actually got th things like aculon which is a building resource don't have any background at all uh things like this one here with the amber so you can tell very very quickly because it's got a blue background that it only works on colony development that's all it actually does do this incense, for example, uh, gives you, like they all have colony development, but this one also then boosts colony growth. So with the uh, magenta type color, we can then see the colony growth. Uh, this one here is another blue, so it's just colony development and so on and so forth through it. This one is a colony happiness, so it's got more of a purpley color. And so very quickly, this one here is colony income, so it's green. And so the color, the color combinations actually tell you what the benefit is. And so when we go and, and look at, uh, and some of the, then you've got the, the big ones like the Caribbean Spice, which will be more the gold color because these are the super luxury resources. It's very, very nicely done. Uh, in terms of the, um, that's one thing that has been sort of fixed up a little bit with the game is uh, like there's only one fuel source now. So Caslon, we don't have to think about all the different fuel sources we had to in, in Distant Worlds 1. We only have Caslon now, which I think is, uh, for me is a good, a, a good simplification in the game. But this is essentially one of our standard building type resources. So yeah, it's just a really, really nice because there's so many different lux uh, so many different resources in the game. You know, it's sort of, you lose track of what they do, but this color coding, allows you, and I'll show you where this actually kicks in, in a, in a meaningful way. Like if we actually have a look, for example, at, um, like it might, it maybe even at our home system. If I just start to hover over these worlds, uh, actually, where will it show it? Just trying to think of how we do it. If I just hover over the world, see how we can see straight away there, we've got 10% there, and I don't know what the luxury good is, but I know that it, all it's gonna do is just help with development because it's blue. If I go to another world, for example, uh, this one here, uh, this one here has got a blue and a green. So I know that there's one that just gives me a bit of de calling development. The other one's gonna give me a little bit of income, a little bit of resource. And I can then go even further into it and actually sort of uh, click, click the world and then have a look at this one through here. So we can see there, plus one percent colony income by having a tandem opal. So that mod is, um, for me, is is super helpful. Like you can just sort of, some of these you can hover over so even when I hover over that, it'll ch tell me the, the the most prevalent of the resources down below. So I've got a couple of building resources and a couple of um, colony income resources in there. Um, that one there, there's a fair few building resources. It won't show everything, but then when we come back down to the um, to the Yaga area, I can just very quickly see the first one that shows up there 
is the loris fruit, the gold, the gold color. So I know that's an important system. So by having by having this, it means that when we have these, when we hover over these things, we get a bit of a, a very very quick feel for what may or may not be important with the uh, with the, actually the with the actual systems. So these little helpers um, are enormously great. <laughs> so. Uh, it's uh, Joshua saying, yeah, it's a challenge with how t uh, tiny many things are in the UI. Uh, color is helpful, very, very much so. It's um, I'm so I'm really glad you you built this mod because it, that was that was the only thing I would have modded myself in this game, and it's uh, it, you've done a great job of this. It's uh, you went you went well beyond what I what I was thinking. There we go, lots lots of luxuries from that particular system. Uh, not much in there, but it's just. Um, yeah, it's just really nice to be able to sort of just get a very, very quick sort of feel. Probably, you know, actually, I would, I would love to see fuel, um, but you can do it other ways. But it's just uh, fuel would be the only other thing that I would be interested in for the simple. Uh, well, I guess whenever I'm planning an attack, like let's just say I'm planning an attack on the um, on the Xenox, it's easy enough just to go to resources and just click on Caslon. It shows you there where the um, where the refueling stations actually are for for this particular group that's interesting they only have refueling away from their main systems they don't have it there i would have thought their home system should have actually had a a caslon world if we go and click on that one yeah it's only krypton that's weird Yeah, that's very strange. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, that's um, yeah, because normally there'd be a castle on the on the home system. There's certainly one in here. There's a couple in here. Yeah, interesting. So anyway, that's uh, the other way of uh, sort of doing it. But yeah, it's good. It's great. So yeah, well done on your mod. I love, absolutely love them. Like, but particularly that that one. Uh, like that's my favourite. I do like the flag one, but it just what, what wasn't safe for me to use it at that stage. <laughs> and I'm guessing that with the open beta, I know that they're working on other factions. So the open beta will be kicking in with new factions very very soon. Um, okay, so. Um, Okay, so he's saying it took inspiration from the distant world. Well, you, you've extended it well beyond what I was thinking. So, uh, yeah, we're well, no, well done. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, so Seb is saying live mod news uh, right here today. Yeah, no, it's great. I actually, I love it when um, when modders and things do come in and uh, we can actually have a look and see what they've see what they've done. So, actually, I, I might even just deviate back out again. Sorry, I, I will just go and save the game again and I'll just show you what Joshua has done because it's um, these are really quite nice mods. Um, just go and exit the main menu so the one thing that i have turned off and uh, if i just go back into modifications so i'm running a, a few of uh, joshua's mods so this is the refined resources mod that we see in through here as well so i've got that one turned on i've got other ones like the uh, the realistic system names which i really like and the realistic empire names which i really like as well um, and then there's also one for the dlcs for realistic empire names uh, also refresh components, facilities and events. So this one here, uh, Joshua has actually uh, changed the, um, a lot of the graphics and they feel a lot more immersive. Uh, like I think we've just used, I think when in your description in Steam, it was that you've used AI to um, help generate those, but they, they feel good. Like when you actually look at the, um, at the technologies, it, it's, it looks different and it looks fresh. I, I really quite like it. But then this one here, I do have turned off. This is the refresh flags. So adds additional flags for players and AI empires. And the reason that I probably would keep it turned off actually in, in this instance is simply because um, I know that there's more factions coming. And unfortunately, the flags are a uh, component of the actual of, of the factions. And so if you have a if you have a flag uh, mod, it will then override the faction information, which means that the new the new changes don't show up. So it's I would still suggest that if you're playing with the open beta, uh, you're probably better off not playing with refresh flags. But if you're playing with the launch version, which is what we're playing with in here, 1.2.2.0, um, from what Josh was saying, that's now has been um, has now been corrected and will now play with the mortalins and the humans as well. Uh, whereas previously, it uh, it reverted them back to their their other pre-state. And I'm thinking if you, like I'm someone who does play the open beta, so I'm, for me it's safer to keep this one turned off. 
Um, yeah, Joshua's saying, yeah, ready to add more races. Yeah. <laughs> and Joshua's saying, yeah, mid journey and then editing them in to fit the themes. Yes. And it's really, it looks great. Uh, and saying, I took the stock game, XL Mouse Races, and only added the flags. Yeah. Updated from the main branch. Yeah. So it's, but it, what it does is it then reverts them back. So that's the, um, so that's why for me, uh, I'm keeping that one off for now, even though I love the look of it. In fact, um, let's go and have a look and see on Steam. Okay, steam powered. I think these are it's like like don't, don't show if you're not someone who doesn't like playing with mods. It's very very simple to. Um, I'm not logged in onto this particular version, but um, but I uh, keep this one so it, everything sort of is nice and big. But it's very simple to install the mods if you're if you're unsure. How on earth is this mixed? I, I just I just don't get it. Like it's such a great great game. Um, just go to Community Hub, then you'll sort of see the um, workshop. I love that there's more mods being made for it as well. So, um, uh, yeah, so there's, but you haven't looked in here for a while. There's the refresh flags. <laughs> and so if we if just go into the, um, <clears throat> if just go into the bigger list. And have a look at them. So uh, here we go. So we've got the um, so the ones that we've got is the refreshed resources which we just spoke about. These are all rated very highly, and so it and um, and uh, Joshua has actually done a great job of of explaining what is done. The change logs are updated as well, which is really important if you are playing the um, the flag mod. But it just goes through essentially how these all work, which is great. So it's uh, very simple. So well done again, also on the uh, descriptions because a lot of modders don't do that. This is the refresh flags, uh, which look great. And it looks so much better than the base game. Um, these look incredibly good. Um, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, but in this one here, there should be an update. There we go, flattened colors uh, updated for the new game version. There we go, so that's now been updated. So this one is now safe with the current version. But for, I'm guessing for the new open beta, it won't be safe. <laughs> uh, and again, look at the detail, look at the work. It's great. So it's just all these different extras uh, placed into it. So anyway, that's an awesome, awesome mod. Um, come back out. But just one that for me isn't safe for me to play. This is the refresh components as well. And so these have been then, the, the graphics have then been changed with, um, well, as you said there before, mid-journey. So, um, but these are, these all rate very, very highly. Um, you can see they're all sort of, you know, got high ratings, higher rating than the game, <laughs> unfortunately, for the game. Um, this, this one here, Refresh Ship Symbols. I haven't actually, I haven't seen this one. I don't know when this one came in. This XL Beta for Mordecai. There's XL as well, I think. Yeah, this XL, which rates five. This is one that's just, it's too different for me to show because um, it, would be a, it would be a game about the mod, not a game about the game, if that makes sense. So I'm shying away, but there is actually a beta version of that one. So um, yeah, so major updates to XL that require Distant Worlds 2 beta 1. Point, yeah, that's an older version anyway. Uh, you must be on the, on the open beta to use that one. Refresh Symbols. I mean, this is one that I would actually um, have a look at. So, um, yeah, no, it's it's cool. Oh, hang on. I'm so used to these, I probably would just stick with what I've got, I think. Yeah, I think I'd just stick with what I've got, to be honest with that one, personally. Uh, but it does, again, rates very, very highly. If you're sort of new to the game and aren't used to the um, existing uh, uh, symbols, then that would be good. Um, yeah, anyway, there's some good stuff there. Yeah, there's trip symbols as well. Actually, that might um, yeah, that might be worth having a look at as well. Yeah, anyway, there's a lots of... It's great to see so many more mods coming into the actual game as, as well. And again, uh, well done, Joshua, on what you've done. Um, you say, you're saying I might like the troop and ship symbols. I think I'm just too used to the ship symbols myself to not to use it. Um, but it's... Um, yeah, well done. It's great. Anyway, let's get back to the game. But yeah, installing the mods is very, very simple. And then just activating them. You can I've set up like my own little profile. So you can actually have different profiles for different ways that you then play the game. Like if I was going to bring Excel in, I would actually then have Excel and I would actually have that, a separate um, profile for that, uh, for, for doing that one through in through there. 
So it's uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Anyway, let's go across um, and uh, get back to it. Continue the game. Actually, I'm going to have to get going fairly soon, guys. So I'm going to have to start to wind up. Are we in the middle of any fights? I can't remember now if we've... Um, we had one or two, didn't we, that we were... Not that one. It was down in here, wasn't it? Nope, that was where the other one bounced in. It might be in the Windows system. Yeah, let's let's just play this one out and see what actually happens. I'll play it out at half speed. I do like the half speed for, for combat, or quarter speed even. Now this has already got pirates on board. As soon as that finishes, this thing will then come off and do do its stuff. We're inside the range for the uh, for its for its lance missiles. We're not in the range yet for our ships. And then we need we've got a lot of work to do to bring this one down. So that raid is going to be finishing very very quick. Actually, no, they're actually we're pushing them back off. Okay, so we we do actually have very very strong troops. Okay, guys, come on, come on, come on. Okay, it's now atta attacking the Lamented Challenger, which is that one there, that frigate. And we have one fleet coming in with this. This is going to, this is going to really stretch our capabilities here. There goes the, the uh, Lance missiles. There should be, uh, there's a few of them. This guy here has got, I think, three? Yeah, three groups of Lance missiles. So each of these do damage, 38 damage, at a very, very long range. Uh, they, shot, they fire two shots per volley. The, um, and so, um, yeah, we have to essentially try to, to uh, use the point defense systems that we have to knock these out. See how we're doing some damage to them? Well, watch what happens as these hit. Okay, one missed, but then one broke through the one in five chance again and has done damage straight onto the armor. But it doesn't break through like our like our, our guys do. In this case, we've actually got it's we've been able to actually hit this one fairly hard. Um, and its shielding is right down low now. More stuff coming. So we're doing more damage with our sentinel beams. Uh, come on guys, you need to get in nice and close. We need to bring these shields down. Ah, now, what do we have to do here? Where was that instruction? <laughs> Where's the instruction of what to do? Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm talking about decals and icons. <laughs> Just looking through the... Um... I can't see it there. Ah, oh, I've missed it again. Forgetting what was it gave me the information as well. I can't sort of filter very easily. Um, where the hell was it? Something about clicking on the icon. Do we have to have? Do we have to have this open? with the build order ready and then click on the icon that flicked when I did it it wants to do something doesn't it but I don't think I've got an I, I can't build anything anyway I don't think it's, it's going to work let's see if there's, if there's any more information um, So uh, Rockler's saying the thing you mouse you mouse over to get the suggestion to show uh, up click on it rather than rather than mouse over. Which one? <laughs> right, hang on. You, we, there's a 20 second delay. So when you say no, just click there. That doesn't mean anything to me because that's from 20 seconds ago. <laughs> so I've got that one there. Not build ships, I'm sure of that. I'm saying just click. 
nothing shows up there it does want to click on that it tries to do something there but I don't think it can um, so just click the yellow on the on the right side of the screen so this I'm clicking away I'm clicking away on that there and it, it's flicking over here it's trying to do something but it's I just don't have the resources so I think I'm out of steel everywhere I think it's trying to the other way around this is just to click on build ships yep yeah, it can't do it okay that's fine okay that's cool so I can see there build ships actually did also then try to um, try to do that I think actually did or did it it didn't change any of that I don't think I don't believe Let's go back to our home system. Just see if there's anything queued up. No, not building anything. And nothing being built there. Okay, that's fine. So if we have a look at the at the resource shortages. Yeah, we down, still don't have enough to build a single ship with the steel. That will correct itself fairly soon. So uh, I'll try that again. Hopefully that'll happen while we're still in this battle with the uh, with this ship. We get another one of those. So we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. But that's a cool tip if that if that does work. Okay, we're we're finding stuff in the loot now, um, but we want technology. We okay, don't want jumping yet. Want these shields down. Stop with that. Your job is to attack this one. We don't actually have any um, any boarding assault strength at this stage. Do we need to disable this ship if we can? Its shielding is down. There we go. It's trying to jump away. Come on, guys. Get these. Um, disable it. Disable it. They're focused on this ship now. <laughs> so there's, uh, they've disabled one of the weapons here. This one here has got a weapon disabled, but nothing much else. One of the, uh, one of the slots inside has been damaged, like the, one of the fuel cells. That doesn't mean anything. Come on, you need to, uh, need to get onto this. Our fleets are strong enough to take these on, which is great. Still jumping. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, damn it, it got away. This is the trouble we're going to find, I think, with this ship. We're going to, we may get lucky at some point. We're strong enough with our ships to be able to take these things on. Uh, let's attack this guy now. He's also going to be trying to jump away, but we should be able to do enough damage here to uh, stop it. Reactor is, now the reactor is offline. So what's that, what this means is we go and have a bit of a look at this one. So even though its hyperdrive is is ready to go, and even though it says that the um, that it can like you know it can do different things, it's actually now disabled, which means it can't escape from here. Um, and so um, what we really should do with our first is, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get the. We're not going to. We're just going to keep on attacking. We can't do. We can't do the capturing of it uh, at this stage. So, but uh, we've at least made a good start here. Look, with the reactor offline, we can sort of see that the Nova Core reactor is at 98% health. So they need to get their damage control units to go and go and fix that one up. Uh, the engines are down as well, so it's, it doesn't have any impulse engines. So unfortunately, we're just going to be destroying the ship. this number comes up we can then flick it across so there it goes there it goes there it goes okay so we've just got our uh, boarding assault strength back in again now I can go back and capture it there they go that will then stop uh, attacking it and so this one very very badly damaged but we will capture this one no problem at all so that's done small freighter under attack where looks like a different system 
Ah, uh, yeah, that's in the uh, that's that that's around this um, this private system. Now this is a um, this is the Red Fang Raiders, which are the friends that we have. Uh, this is one of their fleet frigates. Actually, no. What that what's that doing? Hang on, we no longer. Did we actually accidentally attack one of theirs? Okay, well, they're, they're no longer friendly. <laughs> Alright, so we've got two lots of uh, pirates attacking us. But I'm going to have to leave it here, guys. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I do have to get going. So I'll, um, I'll bid you all farewell. Um, and thanks for watching. Uh, as I say, the game is getting better and better. I've got no idea why the ratings of this game are, are sort of in the middle of the road ratings on Steam. Um, this game is one of the best 4X uh, space games out there. It's um, it's certainly the, the best of the simulation type games dealing with space. Um, like it's incredibly detailed. Uh, just I love it. It's such a great, great game. But I will actually leave it there. And... Um, I'll be away for, as I say, probably the best, best part of the week, and then I'll be back again to do other things after that. So thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. And, um, yeah, as, as I say, it's one, of the, it's one of these games that's worth investing the time into it. It's not as, it's not as complex as what people think, even though it's, it does a lot of stuff. Just remember you've got full automation in through here with your policy settings. You can automate everything, and you've got, like, presets as well. So you can actually just sit back and watch it like a movie screen if you're wanting to, just to see different things actually happening. You don't have to do anything at all. Um, I remember myself and I was saying too many small and not so small bugs and flaws. There certainly were at the start, not so much anymore. Uh, David's then saying very helpful. Dad, yeah, thanks for that. It's it's a great great game, and it's uh, it's one of these things where when it launched, it should have launched into early access. I think that was a major mistake. I was really surprised when it didn't when it wasn't in early access. It really needed to be, and it needed to be it, like I wouldn't I would say that around now is is when it doesn't you know, wouldn't have to be in early access. Um, so Joshua was saying Distant Worlds 2 team is constantly taking feedback on Discord and working towards fixes, which is nice to see. Yeah, they, they're, very, they're very responsive. Uh, they certainly haven't been able to do the quality of life things until now, but now we're starting to see those, like the little borders and stuff. So, yeah, it's, I think, I don't know, now we're sort of hitting into a, a stage of the game, which is, um, which is really quite exciting. So if, you, uh, if you're into space combat at all and into simulation type games, this is an incredible game, and as I say, if you want to just, if you literally want to just play the game where you don't do anything at all, you can literally just go into here, and just go into rule and absence full, and just let the game play itself. And what that does is it just puts everything to full automation, and so you can it it's essentially what you are playing. Also, another thing, by the way, if you are playing the game and you're trying to think, okay, look, I really, really wish I was playing as. X, Y, or Z um, Empire. I'll just save the game before I do this. But it's um, but if you are wanting to play, let's just think, oh, actually, I really want to now play as the Xenox. Uh, all you need to do there is just, uh, I'll just, just go back into here. You've got, the, um, you've got the game menu back in through here. You can then go into the game editor. And this is actually something that was added in fairly recently. We can actually go through and this the game editor then shows you everything in the game like all of these i said when i was doing the, my live stream yesterday that you've got all these different ambushes and stuff so there's a lot of spoilers when you actually do look at this but you can go to any of the factions and think okay look i'll i'll play as one of the actual other factions so this is all the other stuff that's going on in the game in the actual game editor so there's a lot of stuff a lot of events type stuff going in there which was sort of all randomly generated um, this unfortunately now tells me that I'm probably going to be able to get the Loris fruit without too much trouble. <laughs> but if I wanted to play as the Xenox, I can just go and um, select an empire to edit. So I can actually go and p pick, um, I'm not sure which one they actually are. The Xenox Principality, I'm guessing, is this one here. And I can just play as them. I can actually then just go click, click that one in, get a whole lot of different warning messages. I get the monarchy because they're playing as a monarchy in this, in, in this instance. And so now I'm playing as from their perspective. So they're aware of more things than what I am. They're aware of us. Uh, they've got more exploration, but it only goes a certain distance. So you can chop and change uh, if you if you're not um, if you're not happy with 
the, with what, who you're playing as. So that's just another little tip. So you don't have to stick with the um, uh, with the, the faction that you start with if you, if you really wanted to move on. I'm, and I'm happy with what we're, we're, what we're doing, but that's actually another little tip. So um, uh, Joshua's in saying, yeah, let's you role play as a ship captain or fleet admiral and let the rest of the game. Yes, very much so. So that's what, actually one of the selling points of the game is that you can play as like as a single character like you can do whatever you like in the game it's um i mean it'd be a bit boring but it's uh but you can actually do it or a single ship single fleet whatever you want to be doing you can actually sort of do it that way uh me myself and i are saying complaint one plays itself complaint two this is overwhelming <laughs> yes <laughs> that's very true which is why it rates uh, like it doesn't rate fairly <laughs> <laughs> Zach is in saying, um, take over another faction, create internal chaos, revert to original. Well, why not? Like if it, you can do anything, it's it is. Um, um, yeah, they see there, there. Uh, he's he's got like this is the, this is the, our friend, who is actually now um, befriending these guys. So they've actually gone across, and um, yeah, I would guess that these guys have got um, the. Yeah, they've, that's the only pirates that they that they're aware of, and they're playing paying them protection money. And getting benefit from them. <laughs> Unknown system maps, probably one of our maps that they're that they're going to be selling them or something like this. Uh, but it is pretty cool. It's uh, you know it, there's a lot open to it because of the simulation aspect. Anyway, guys, I'll we'll have to leave it there. So thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you in about a week's time. Oh, hang on, I should just say. Uh, the chat tactic that I'll be when I do come back, it'll probably be back on my normal Monday slot. That's when I'll be back uh, being able to do things. So I was going to change that to um, to Sunday, and I'll probably start to do that one more regularly on a on a Sunday. But next week will be on the Monday, and I have some big big news coming uh, with that one. There's a, a game that many 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 of you are wanting to play uh, and see, and I'm allowed to show it uh, over that time. So. Um, so there's a lot of big, big news things coming in the next week. Um, I wish I was actually here to be able to do them when when the embargoes lift, because uh, there's a few things, as I say, a few things coming up over the next week or two um, that uh, you really be, you you will you will definitely be very very interested in. So um, I'll, I'll, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> not even it's not just one game. There's actually a few different things coming up. Uh, but there's one in particular that I, that I know uh, that uh, many, many players have been really looking forward to. And so uh, that's, that's on its way. Anyway, I won't say any more than that. So that's a bit of a teaser for when I do get back. <laughs> and so when I do get back, I'll probably be just launching straight into the chat tactic type stuff and then going through those changes. Um, maybe even do a special video on some of those, some of those games that, that I now will be able to show off as well. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.